entertainment. <laughs> Appreciation Society. And that, that's entertainment. <laughs> Appreciation Society. Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Hey, Marla. Hey, there's Brandon. What's going on, Brandon? I see Johnny. Johnny Small Pepper was in here just a, just a minute ago. Hey, there's 351. Hey, Georgia Dime Recovery. Hey, buddy, I think you was the first one in here. I appreciate that. Make a love shout out, Marla. How you doing, Marlove? How's everybody doing on this fine Wednesday, 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 Wednesday morning? Hey, I want to say I apologize for not going to Topic Tuesday yesterday, like I said I was going to, but man, hey, Indiana Chris, what's up, brother? Hey, uh, I've got, uh, yesterday was a gorgeous day for fishing, and here in a little bit, I'll show you a, a little small clip, if y'all ain't seen it already, of, uh, just some of the 16 uh, catfish I caught. I caught 15 blues and one five-pound channel cat. All the rest of them was nine pounds and greater. Uh, hey, Aunt Grace. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, yesterday was an awesome fishing day. Uh, it goes to prove that uh, it's like deer hunting. It's the right place, right conditions, right timing, and, of course, the right type of bait. And, I, I man, I have flash yesterday but uh we're gonna let uh see if we get some more people in here this morning we're gonna be uh talking about crappie and getting everybody's uh sound like my dog's walking around in there sound like uh all right marla i'm glad you're doing good yeah auntie grace i know you're from texas awesome thank you so much <clears throat> we're gonna be uh talking about crappie fishing and uh and that's what the topic's going to be. I mean, I apologize again, but yesterday I couldn't, I couldn't resist, man. It was just a gorgeous day out there, no wind. And I know the blues were, were in there. I just had to get back here to get them. And uh, I ain't apologize no more. I had fun fishing. I had a blast, man. But we're here today, and we're going to be uh, just – talking about crappie fishing because I, I know for a fact that uh 351 cleveland he crappie fishes now he's got a, a nice rig he's got a nice rig set up in a boat he's got that uh uh fish finders on there he's got a uh, live scope on there man i watched his videos and it was pretty neat how you see the jig go down and he'll be moving up and down or a minnow or whatever he's got on there all of a sudden you see that crappie go up and hit that dude man he, Yanking him out of there. Hey, there's Apache. What's going on, Apache? So if y'all if y'all want to come up and uh and talk about crappie fishing and what y'all use, the techniques and stuff like that, uh, y'all come on up and we can uh just try to help each other out and get let other people get in on some of this crappie stuff, you know, because uh, where you're at doesn't mean that's where I'm going to be at because we're usually in different states and stuff like that. So, Hey, awesome fishing, man. Good afternoon to you. we got 10 awesome, 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 awesome folks watching in here. But, uh, yeah, yesterday I caught my uh, new PB blue catfish. It's 25.5 pounds and uh, my previous one was 24.7 and then yesterday I caught a 24.48 I think it was and turned around right behind that one and, and, and got that 25 pounder so I'm moving up the PB ranks slowly but surely and them fish put on a, an awesome fight I mean that 25 pounder it, it uh, it's a good time to catch a crawfish now it's time to harvest them
not here. The water's still a little cool. When it warms up a little more, we'll be able to pick them up off the bank over here at the dinko. Uh, man, they'll crawl right out of the water right there where you're standing there fishing. You can just pick them up. I almost broke NC State record with white crappie, no fish finder either. <laughs> I know a lot of people think that fish finder stuff is a, uh, it's cheating, but I find it fascinating how they can see that jig and they'll come up there and turn on it. <coughs> and, uh, cause there'll be a fish right here by it. It'll be looking at it. Want to be way over here. And they'll see it turn and go after it. And I'm like, Oh yeah, you should have went and got that when you had a chance, buddy. Hey, there's little miss Emily. Good morning or good afternoon to you, Emily. I never heard any crappie talk from the catfish and, and crappie. I, I never heard any crappie talk. Well, it's because they, they didn't go back there. You know, they was all too busy trying to mingle, I guess you could say. Uh, like they haven't seen each other in years. <laughs> they see each other every day on YouTube. But uh, they all had a lot of fun, I guess. But yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't hear nothing back about it either. I've seen two or three lives where uh, uh, there's a lot now for sale in our local store, in Antonio. Oh, that's awesome! Y'all, crawfish is moving on around up there, ain't it? Of course, it's a lot warmer there than it is here. It's the technology now, but with right rig and right conditions and bait, you can locate them and the depth. That's right. That's right. Especially if you know where the structure's at and stuff like that. That is. But because me at live scope is an awesome thing. It's it's a good thing. I mean, uh, you can see exactly where to put that jig beside that limb instead of trying to hook in that limb. You know. <laughs> hey, there's Fresno. Morning, sir. I need to paddle to stink sto. All that messy talking. Morning, sir. I need that paddle to spank. <laughs> oh, you talking about small town? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That mess he's talking that paddle back here. <laughs> I see he, he needs it just keep staring the pot. Oh, he left channel, and that's not cheating as a T. Hey, good morning, Ernie. Yeah, a lot of people have that live scope. I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, uh, technology's technology. If you can afford it, go for it. That's what I say. I I just never can keep the battery power running long enough to keep something like that running. But uh what was I talking about? I was talking about something. Y'all remember what I was talking about? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Indiana Chris said, uh, uh, I'll be the truck driving a minute. All right. Yes, it's warmer here. It says 74 degrees. And holy cow, it's going to be freaking hot. Yesterday got to 71. And I'm sitting here thinking I'm going to have a pretty much a, just a, just a chill fish day, you know, shoot some video footage and stuff like that. And uh, they fish a bit so hard and heavy, man, real fast that I was actually sweating. I was like, huh. And you know how it is for a fat man when he starts sweating? He can be worn out quick. You see my face is red. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it is sunburned. My arms are sunburned. Hey, there's the life channel. Let's go, Rocco. Uh, let's see here. Buh, 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 buh. Crappie usually aren't. At the bank, they don't like sunlight for dark covered brush piles. Yeah, unless they're spawning. And when they're spawning, they're right up on top of that bank. I have seen them when the spawn, I've been over our, our lake when the spawn has turned on. And uh, A raised outdoors, welcome in. Uh, that I'm sitting there catching them off about 12 feet out, six feet down. I'm catching some nice ones. And then all of a sudden, it's like, all the way down that bank, these uh, you can see nothing but crappie backs. I mean, the backs of them just coming out of the water, going up to the bank right there, chasing stuff. And you can shallow up to about that deep, throw it out there, boop, boop, and pull one before you even get first good little twitch on it. You pull them out of there. Yep, I have two raised. I have two. I've caught crappie from two foot to uh, thirty foot. Hey, there's the one arm poo bear. How you doing, Mark? Uh, but back to Indiana Chris's deal, uh, at the Catfish Crappie Compo Rants comp Conference, uh, uh, I seen them on their lives and they would walk through the catfish and stuff and they'd get right at the crappie stuff. And they said, oh, that's the crappie stuff back here and they turn and walk off. 
you know, hey, you know, you ought to do something a little different. But if your if your channel says catfish channel, you know what what can you do? I mean, if you're if you're just trying to promote strictly catfishing, I don't blame them for not walking back here to the crappie stuff. But still, some of that crappie stuff is pretty awesome. Trying to get Fresno into the crappie fishing. He said, I don't know how. Tons of videos out there, buddy. <laughs> Go look. It's easy. Have you two poles. Have one set up for a minnow throw out there, different depths until you find that depth. And then once you catch one at that depth, get you one with some different color jigs, try them at that depth and see what they're hitting on them jigs. And you sit there and just pull it and pow, pow, pow. It's fun. Hey, Ruby. Good morning, Ruby. We got Auntie Grace. She's throwing them hots out there. I'm going to be using a 12-foot crappie rod this year. 12-foot crappie rod. What, to catch crappie? I think I've got 10-footers. I don't, I don't think i got anything over 10. Because I troll. I put six out in the front, and I'm just trolling around. Uh, I think now I've got one that's got eight eight out in the front when somebody's with me. Because when, when, you're, when you're on them, uh, man, it's constantly pulling up. Ernie said they had a pretty cool man-made indoor pond with a dock. Good morning, Kevin. Kevin Fishes. How's that shoulder doing, Kevin? You know, uh, skipjack season's coming up, buddy. I'm fixing to get ready, and I'll, I'll probably go try it next week to see if I can catch any. Uh, raised outdoors, and I typically catch. I'm going to wait to take, uh, watch the old fisherman on YouTube. He's a good teacher. Uh, Ray's comment didn't even come up on the field here. Oh, there it is. I typically catch most crappie 8 to 15 on brush or near shed. It's a good depth for most of the year, even during spawn, those stages and those depths. Yeah, I usually catch them between 8 and 15 on her. Like, we got a thing, place out there that we call the flats, and it ranges from 4 feet down to 15 foot. And as long as you can stay between that 8 and 15, that's an awesome spot for us up there. And then, uh, Three months from being able to fish. Oh, man. Ozark Bound Outdoors. Good morning, good morning. Catfish has been 1% for me, but I'm going to try more this year. Awesome. Hey, KC Fish Page, good morning. Black Knight Mustang. What's up, BKM? I would have to learn that crappie stuff. Hey, uh, I'm going to tell you, if you start getting, Fresno, if you start catching some crappie, you will, uh, You'll do a lot more of it because uh, it uh, it's it's addictive, man. Especially when they're hitting and you're looking for them. Like if the catfish ain't biting, go crappie fishing, man. I mean, it's just uh, you're doing the same thing with catfish, except you're moving around searching for them, and uh, and you can get just about anywhere on the bank and if you want and just crappie fish. Hey, good morning, Shorty. She say good morning to everybody. But yeah, if y'all ain't seen it, go check my shorts out of the uh, footage I got because I've got uh, I caught sixteen yesterday, and I uh, the smallest one was a five pound channel cat, and then the smallest blue was nine pounds, and it just went from there to almost thirty. So. Uh, that got quite a few people in here. Uh, and some states, crappie is the best flathead bait. Yeah, but here, uh -uh, that's a no-no, man. That's considered panfish, and you can't do that here. <laughs> you can't even use the head or the after you flake the body parts. And that's crazy. I started fishing soon, and now I'm allowed to use three rods. Yeah, that's right. In Ohio, you can use three rods now. That is awesome. I'm glad they started doing that. Okay, I'll watch your short later, bro. Okay, BKM. I appreciate it, buddy. Russia, do you have any pics of crappie that you caught? Uh, not here on my phone, no. But somewhere I've got pictures uh, here somewhere where I was messing around and I sent a I had somebody take a picture of me and I sent it to some people and said, I got the crappie bling bling. I got one on each finger and they're hanging down about to almost to my elbow. It was pretty good size crappie, but I don't know where they're at. 
I'm always behind on watching YouTube. I'll binge watch a channel at time to catch up. I'll be binge watching Rustic. I appreciate that race. Probably it's a game fish. Here you can't use it for bait. Yep, that's what it is here too. It's game fish. Pan fish, game fish, you can't use it for bait. It's like our bluegill. You can't use anything over four and a half inches, I believe. Don't hold me to that, but I think it's four and a half inches. You can't use it as bait. It might be five. I don't know. I don't go that much with bluegill fishing. So, uh, BK, I appreciate that, but I'm not a top big professional fisher. I mean, I can catch fish. Uh, hey, Chris. Hi, brother. Good evening, brother. And, uh, but it's like, you know, I need to put more time on the water. I mean, I can catch fish. I have caught fish, but I put a lot of time on the water to catch them fish. And I can catch a bunch of them. I can't use crappie for bait. Yeah, that's all. Oh, Ernie, you got that right, man. Hey, crappie's good, good, good. Uh, I got this guy over here. He's a subscriber to me. He goes down there and fishes down in Dinko for stripers and crappie and stuff. And, uh, and me and him's going to go up there to Wapello and we're going to, uh, this April and do a, a day of crappie fishing. And I'll probably go live on that or I might shoot some videos. I don't know. I might shoot some videos so that way I can, uh, show everybody the te technique I've got, what I'm using, how deep, you know, and what to look for and stuff like that. Right now, we got nice weather here, but we got some severe weather supposed to be rolling in. I hope it passes it up, passes us up, and I hope that anybody that's in the path is it's not real bad and they stay safe. But y'all are in here. I'm going to show y'all something right here. If I can find it. Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think about that? that? That's just a few from yesterday. I caught a bunch of uh, several 13 and 20 pounders and it's 19 pounders. And uh, you're in Jacksonville, Florida? Oh my goodness. Hey, Auntie Grace. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's not the biggest that can come out of Mississippi River. That's the most common size and uh, a bunch of small ones. And I guess yesterday I just got lucky. But if I put more time in on that water and stuff, go fishing more, uh, the more the bigger, bigger ones I catch. I mean, I'll get skunked a lot, but I still catch the big ones. That's a big boy fish there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mississippi has some giant blues in there and some giant flatheads and some giant channel cats in there. Hey, there's sugar. Hi, sir. Helen's vlog here. Sugar, welcome in. Inde, good evening. Welcome in. Those are uh, what they call blue catfish. Hey, there's up in the air. What's up, Aaron? Crappie for bait, not here. <laughs> but uh, what do y'all normally use? Do you use a casting rod or jigging pole? Or me, I got a seven foot uh, fluger with a Shimano reel because my fluger wore out. But I still use that seven foot medium, medium heavy, and I can get the good play on it. I use eight pound test line and or six, and I'll put a slip floater on it cigar sip slip floater on it and i'll put a little bit of split shot on, on underneath that and then i come down with a jig head uh ain't grace uh yes i throw them back i don't keep them i don't keep fish out at mississippi river because that water's not very clean uh, jacksonville florida wait on drug test to come back hopefully today man that you have to do that every year don't you Unless it's my fly rod. 
six pound looks like rod and reel, says Andy. Man, I know you had to do it last year. Yep, this is the new year, though. It's like yesterday, our, our fishing license ran out here yesterday. So the new year for the fishing season starts for the new license starts today. And after I get off here, I've got to run a pound and get me my new fishing license. I'm just I'm just starting to get different rods for different trips. Yeah, I've got a I've got my skipjack rods. <clears throat> I've got crappie rods. I got my catfish rods. Whatever I'm gonna go for that day, that's the rods I take. And I don't take no other ones because I don't want to say get discouraged and say, well, the crappie ain't hit. I'm gonna keep trying to go for crappie. But it, you know, most people take several rods when they say, well, the crappie ain't hit, forget about it, I'll go catfish. You know, if I'm going for crappie, I put my crappie rods in there, and that's what I go for. I use eight pound all year round. Yep. I use normally use eight because uh, I can put a little extra weight on there above my jig head, about a, I don't know, say about a foot, and I can really get it, get some yardage on it, get it out there where I need to get it when they're in deeper, deeper water. I got two catfish rods, two bait and wait rods for them. And then you got two rods I just use for everything. <laughs> I got one. I call it the $9 rod. Y'all probably seen it in my previous videos, but it's, it's $9 rod. It costs more than that. But with my uh, my state tax ID number for my bait business, uh, I got it for nine bucks. And it's just a cheap rod. I think it was like 28 bucks. I got it for nine. Hey, Randy, uh, welcome in, buddy. And But, <clears throat> man, I've caught good catfish on that, bass, crappie, uh, sturgeon. Man, I've caught some fish with that rod. That rod's been a good one. And right now, I mainly use it for my skipjack. But I have used it in my previous videos, catch catfish with it. And it's a good rod. It's a heavy seven-foot good rod, man. Uh, everyone said had a good time last night, Randy. Glad we met you. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. He was making his rounds, wasn't he? I can't wait for the weather complete perfect to fish. Oh, yeah. It's like we're supposed to have topic Tuesday for crappies last Tuesday, but that was the only great good day we that we had that week where there wasn't a ton of high winds and raining. And uh, had partly cloudy, partly sunny, so I went fishing, uh, caught one, but had a good time. And then uh, this Tuesday, we're supposed to have it, and man, there was like no wind, sunny, beautiful, beautiful day. And I said, I'm not passing this up, so I'll put this over here on Wake Up, Wednesday Wake Up. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hey, Fishing Local 252. Uh, last channel, Rocco said, Abu Garcia Rod have had real issues. My fluggers getting worn out. My ugly sticks. And yeah, I got, uh, I got one flugger to left, I think. It's right here. And I'm going to tell you, it's still a good reel. I mean, it, it's still a good reel. The only bad thing about the fluggers is that these here get bent real easy. But it's still usable. Because what you don't realize is, is that you don't ever use this part. This right here is just to flip it over. That's all that's supposed to be for it. That right there is your PowerPoint on your reel all the time. This right here is just a flip, so you throw it out and flip it back, and then the line sets right there. Uh, and this side over here also helps give you extra tensile strength on that to keep that from pulling back when you got fish on there. But uh, so that being bent right there don't don't affect me none at all. And it's a good reel. I'm going to put it on a different pole. But for my skipjack fishing, I've had that one for two years. So I figured I got to have some uh, new rods to handle the skipjack volumes that I catch. So I went and bought two Shimano's. Uh, zombie, what's going on, zombie? Zombie prepper. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Anybody go uh, uh, crappie fishing? 
this weekend. I figure uh, 252 and 351, they, they probably went crappie fishing if the weather was good. Hey, there's there's Beard Eagle. Yes, give us a professional teaching on fishing, bro. I can learn a lot. Well, I can teach you how to skunk out quite a bit. <laughs> Let me see here. I uh, don't want that one. I won't close it, close it out of that. Okay, I won't go here, here. I won't copy that. Go there. Go there. Go there. Nope. Go here. Go there. Oh, let me see get that over there. Hey, look at there. There's the... There's the stream yard in case someone will come up. Yeah, Kev, man, that, that's bad. Uh, that you can't go fishing for three months, man. Uh, 252. Uh, 252, you went crop fishing the other day, didn't you? Did you catch any? Oh, y'all don't forget, get y'all's coffee this morning, too. Make sure y'all got plenty of coffee. I am learning to catch crappie. Any technical knowledge is appreciated. <laughs> well, what I do is I buy the little rubber stops to put on my line. I buy it. You have to buy it for the poundage line. Like if I'm using eight pound test line, I buy the, the, the little rubber bead stops for six pound test because I don't want that thing to move. Because sometimes I do put pretty good size split shot on it, put two of them on it so I can reach out there. Because I want to be able to get out there about 40 yards and uh, to get down. And I can adjust that thing up to 8 to 15 feet or whatever to make that down. Then I use a 3-inch a uh, slip floater. And then I just put a little 32nd, 16th jig head on there. Then I use the color jigs I use. Normally, the two main ones I use is red chartreuse and black and chartreuse. But sometimes I have to have the red. Yellow body, red head, yellow body with sharpshoes tails. That that works pretty good. Uh, I asked you earlier, did you have your coffee? But you said no. I didn't say it, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, you know I got my coffee this early morning. It's only eight twenty six. There runs a got sweet tea. He said, just kidding. He had to say that. Let me see. I missed something right here. Okay. I'm going to go up, 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 up. <laughs> oh, there's Sis Rose. There's Sis Rose. Like and share, Rusty. Good morning or good evening to you, Sis Rose. Uh, is Randy leaving? Okay, got to go back to work later. Okay, Randy. Thanks for dropping in, bud. Uh, you be safe out there. This phone's not compatible with StreamYard. Hey, did you ever get that V8 working? I think you got a video on it. I need to go watch that. Oh, there's Coastal. Good morning, Coastal. Coastal typed in good morning rustic outdoor like she don't know me. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Hey, rustic outdoor, how you doing? <laughs> hey, there's Leon. Morning, Leon. I downsized to Carolina, to Carolina with a small worm weight and small swivel with a small leader. How about for your... I don't use swivels on mine uh, because uh, when yes, I went live this morning for you testing it out okay i'll go back and watch it buddy i never got a notification on that uh i will go be checking that out uh might have to go fish on thursday morning if i can get motivated <laughs> i can't say i blame you uh i was gonna say something oh uh i don't use swivels on my uh, crappie setup because i want it all down one straight line to the hook because i adjust uh, 
I don't even think I've got any slip flows in here with me right now, but uh, if you hold on, I'll be right back and I'll show you one of my slip floaters I use uh, to show you how I adjust mine to make my jig more active. Uh, let's see if I can find one here. Hey, look, what are you doing? Uh, my crappie bags over here. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I got my crappie bag right here. Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for in here. See if I got it in here. I should have because I use this to catch moon eye too. And my this is my skipjack bag too. Let's see what's in here. I might not have any in here right now. And I do not see it. But as you can tell, I've got many different types of crappie jigs in here. And I use all different kinds of sizes of split shots. And there's none in that one. Might not have. Let me see if I can fill it when I'm That feels like floaters right there. Find out. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. I got one. That's all she can see there. Hey, Mesti. No way, Mesti. How you doing, Mesti? Backwood Small Angels, welcome in. Okay, you see this slip floater rig right here? This is a slip floater. This right here is a the two inch. And, uh, but the two and a half, maybe. But it's got the little shaft in there. It's all the way through there. Put your line through here. Got a little rubber stop. Most people put a bead on there, but I don't like a bead because the bead slows down the process because I want this thing to go like that when it goes down in there. Uh, let's see who's down here. I said, hey, there's BKM. Hey, morning, brother. Hey, what's going on? And, uh, I got a lot of, lot of light in here because it's like real dim. They don't have no lights on the wall. Huh. That's unusual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This thing is so, out. It's right here. And I adjust it where it's smaller on this end, taller on this right here. So when it's floating, I can make that jig twirl up, bring it up higher up, make it fall. Because I'm constantly making this jig do this right here to that water, making it bounce. And the higher up you got this, the more the jig rises and falls. Now, if you take this thing, sometimes I run it where it's like only that high. And when you jig it, it barely moves it because it puts a more of a finesse. Because sometimes they don't want that thing moving. They just want it to barely move. So I adjust my my shaft down lower so when I jerk on it, it don't pull it as much. Oh, we lost BKM. Rocco, Rocco's working. So I hope that that's that's a good tip for you out there on the crop fishing part, or you can just leave it like that there and work it one way. I mean, to me, this this serves a purpose of three different ways. Right here, it gives it like a little medium of action on your on your jig down there, and if you run this up higher, like it's right here, it pulls that that line pulls it down more, make it flop more, and when you're bouncing it down through there, and it gives it more of aggression. Uh, play to it and if you lower it down low you don't have to go that low and when you jerk it it just gives it just enough finesse if, if they're real picky and finicky and they don't want to eat nothing and you can still trigger some bites so i mean there's three ways right there besides looking for the depth and uh of the fish because you always got to go up and i recommend if you're looking for a depth of a crappie and you're on the boat or the bank, there's not a lot of structure, but you know there's there's a good pathway. The crappie goes through there or whatever, and you're in a good crappie place. You can take this. Uh, I recommend just move it six inches at a time up to find the depth that you need. I mean, if you start off at eight feet and there's nothing there, move only six inches. Move only six inches. We've only six inches until you get down to four feet, three feet, two feet. I mean, you never know. I mean, uh, I, I used to move it quite a bit at one time. And 
I thought, man, that's just either I'm getting above them or below them. So I've already moved it. My stop six inches at a time, either up or down to, to find them. Cause if they're sitting at seven foot and they're at, and you go across to them eight foot, they sometimes they won't see that jig, even though crappies always looking up to find their food. And you might be above them and they're like, eh. but if you uh, drop it six inches, it's a little closer to them. They don't have to exert more energy and they'll come up and hit it. That's how, that's how I've learned. Yeah, my hey, what's going on, man. guys? Signal, my All signal right. not too good here. <laughs> See, Russ, like this is what I was talking about. I make my own. Like, I use a Carolina rig for catfishing, crappie fishing, everything. I just downsize. See, I put a swivel right here, and I, I slide a, a, a small worm weight up and down the line with a bead, and then I make me a leader. And then what I do is I take my hook and I bend it. You see how I bend my hook? Yeah. That right there, when I catch a bluegill on crappie, it, when I bend that hook like that, it keeps them from – I mean, I might catch one or two of them that swallow the hook, but, yeah. but that right there saves it because as soon as they suck it in, they're hooked. Right? You always get them right in the mouth. But you'll get one or two that just is – just gorging it and then you'll catch it back by the gill and then you can open yeah. the gill up and you know what I mean? But if yeah. you try this little bend in your little hook, man, I tell you what, that right there. And it, it was a freak deal because I caught a bass and it bit my hook and I'm like, hell with it. I didn't have no pliers one day. So I was like, I'm just going to use it. So I was putting worms on catching bluegill, you know, for catfish fish. And man, I was like, man, I think I've, come on to something and that's why everybody uses the smaller circle hooks yeah, I like to use that. right I see how like that one is right here i yeah, bend it just a little bit well so i use a 30 second to eight uh 16th of an ounce jig head and their sickle hooks the red yeah that's what i use yeah and, it's cool. that and, and, and uh my uh hey j dog good morning my uh my hookups for the crappie have greatly improved. That's all that I use, Rusty. <laughs> Look, sickles. Yep. It's got that little bend in it, and I'm yep. telling you, that's nine out of ten times it's right in the roof of the mouth. Right. And, but like with all fish, like I caught that catfish uh, yesterday, and well, when he come up there and hit that big old piece of shad, he come up there and he got that hook was in the back of his throat. And I was yep. talking had a long enough pair of these are those pliers I keep with me. They're real long, and I can reach. And they got a bend on the end. Uh, no, these here don't. And uh, oh. I can take in a. Uh, I reach down in there, and I can reach down in there, and I can take a work that circle hook out, and it come out. Didn't even bleed. Didn't harm it. Yeah. No, so I released it back unharmed. Yeah. Like, well, if this dude sucked it down his gut, man, I'm gonna have to take this fish home. But I don't want to do that. See, when I do my crappie, I do a loop yeah. like this on my top one, and I tie direct to the bottom where. Yeah. You know, you got, there's two different ways that it work, but I move mine a lot. I move mine. I, I don't sit there and just jig up and down like a lot of guys. I move it. And I mean, I, cause I've had to do it so long to get bait because that's all I use is live bait. Yeah. I use, uh, I use jigs. I used, sometimes I'll go with live bait to locate them, but most normally I just use jigs. Well, I meant live bait for catfish. That's why crappie fish would got so good at because i had to get live bait all the time you know what i mean yeah all right sis rose thanks for watching you have a good night India, but Chris, yeah like this right here that's all i use is carolina rigs i mean even if it's a up to 65 pound line and big 200 pound swivels and i just downsize my line to a carolina rig and i tell you what or a drop shot but yeah. i tell you what I catch a lot of crappie on little chunks of crappie. Like I'll like if I catch a little crappie and he swallows a jig and I can't get it out and he starts bleeding and I have to kill it. Yeah. I'll just take little bitty chunks of little pieces of meat and stick it on my hook. And I tell you what, you'll you'll catch some crappie. Oh, I got yeah. a video and I got a video and a picture of it of of me doing that because an old lady showed me the crappie wasn't biting on minnows. They yeah. wasn't biting on jigs. And she was like, no, this is what you do. And I learned it from an old lady because she goes out there and yeah, no shit. Well, Oops, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
I uh I was fishing for a uh, bluegill one time for some bait fish, and that's all I was doing was trying to catch bluegill, and I was trying to catch some that we was going to eat. And I figured, well, I'll catch a bunch of these, these small ones, about you know about the size of your pinky, and I said, right. try to catch some of those for uh <clears throat> to put on some jugs for just see if I catch some channel catch with them. And, yeah. Uh, Man, I, I hung one, a little bitty one, and before I got out of the water, a 15-inch crop to come up there and engulfed that dude, man. I was like, well, there, there's good chunks of meat right there, and I got him in. That's what I was telling the one boys. I was like, man, I'll tell you how to find crappie with an old-school fish finder. You catch a crappie, put a hook in his mouth, tie some string onto another pole, let him go, tie a balloon, a little balloon, or yeah. a bobber on top of it, and let it set. Throw that some bitch in the water, and he'll go to them crappie. And whenever that bob that bottle or balloon stops, fish. Yeah, I watched my grandpa and them do that a lot when I was a kid. Me and Possum talked about it one day, but you know it is what it is. Just you know, just dumb stuff that we've done through the years. You know. Yeah, we've all done dumb stuff, but. but uh, okay. Uh, but see these ones right here, like this one right here. The I don't know if you can see the color. I call it my penguin. It's tuxedo shimmer. This one works really, really well at night. Yeah. And then this one right here. This one's uh. This one's Green Lantern, and it's a Mo Glow. And this one's a really, really good one. If you can see the color on that one, because yeah. that's all I use is Bobby Garland. But I like to find somebody. I would like to find a huh? So I was answering Chris, and no, if it works, okay. I can go for it. Well, I want to because you know how in the summertime your fish get smushy. They get smushy, yeah. and in the wintertime with the water cold, they get hard. Well, in the winter, spring, and the summer and stuff, I like to use these Bobby Garland garlands because they're softer. Yeah, look how small that crappie hook is. I use. Damn. I also use that for my skipjack too. All I use is 16th ounce. That's all I use, but I use the, uh, here, let me go. There's and another one. I'll put this one right here on the bottom of my skipjack rig. It's a pretty good size weight on it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, a big hook because, you know, this skipjack, man, I just want to make sure when I'm running seven jigs, I want that to lay out instead of twisted. So you put, we don't have skipjack. I mean, we got it in eastern Oklahoma, but I don't have skipjack here. And here's another good one that works well at night. It lights out. Yeah. That's a good one, too. Now, I just wanted to pop up and show you what I was talking about with the Carolina rig deal for a few. I wasn't trying to, you know, because you said crappie talking. You know me. <laughs> yeah. But I was going to show you uh, my well, jig heads. I use I use big bite jig heads. I go to Walmart and get them. I, love, I used to love crop fish. I fished all the time. Uh, oh, man. I, and then I started doing some catfish. After my father-in-law died, you know, he was my he was my fishing partner and uh, a fishing buddy. And when he died, I kind of lost interest in the, in the crop fishing, so I got back into catfishing. Here's a color hook that I use, uh, Rustic. It's a, the sickle, but it's got a yellow. Wait, let me see. Uh, where's the a jig head? It's a yellow jig head. And it's got a black deal on its head, but it's got the big eyes. I love the big yeah. eyes. That's a that's a big thing right now with a lot of crappie guys. I don't use the. I've always ones. hey, I use the raw ones and uh, and, but a lot of people. That's a big thing now using them colored jig heads to match your deals. See, they got a deal on the market now that you can get one down here at Grizzly Jigs down here in Crowsville. Uh, and there's a white water it where it's a device, a little handheld device. You drop the, the line down into water and it tells you what colors to use for that water. And I'm going to tell you, it's a hundred bucks. And, but that thing works. If you've got that color jig in your deal, you're, you'll catch crappie with that. Well, I was trying to tell possum too. Like if you double jig like I do, I double jig all year round unless I get one of the jigs bit off and then I mess with it because I don't want to retie. You know what I mean? Well, see, I use a lot of double jig setups and just for the casting part, no floaters, no nothing. Just I put it on like a six pound test line, two jigs, throw it out there and let it sink for a little bit. Try to do the Mississippi count each time and then start working it back a little bit at a time. 
and you catch them like that freehand. Let me tell you another secret that I've learned. Like, say I'm using a yellow jig head with the yellow, and then I'm using a white, wait, where are we at? A white with a pink pearl. Now, when I'll be catching crappie and stuff, sometimes they'll stop biting. So what I'll do is I'll take this color and switch it to the bottom and bring the bottom color up to the top and switch the jig heads. And sometimes that works really well too, that change of color. But if you can figure out if you're double jigging, if you can figure out that color combination, like I always like to use this, this green lantern yeah. or a pearl or a pink pearl or a Cajun cricket, which is orange. But if you can find those two color combinations, I mean, you'll, you'll smoke them. Oh yeah. I mean, you, sometimes you just switch your rubbers back and forth, you know, from your bottom color up to your top and your top down to your bottom. Yeah, like uh, one day I was up there fishing and I couldn't get a hit, nothing. And this one guy, he was catching left and right. Yeah. And I, but every jig color I had in my box and I had like two or 300 different colors. And, uh, and, this guy goes, do you got any red heads, black, yellow bodies with sharp tooth tails? I said, no, I don't have that kind. And he gave me a little bag of them. Man, as soon as that hit the water, wham, 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 wham. I sat there there at nighttime, no light, casting out just for the feel. And as soon as I started jigging it back, bam. This was at night in the dark. And I was like, and then my last one tore. And so I put a yellow and sharp truth on there and never got another hit. Speaking of that, right? Speaking, speaking of that, right there, Indiana Chris says I caught a thirteen and a half inch crappie on a three inch frog pattern jitterbug. Yep. Well, looky here, this one right here is called Hornet, and it's kind of like a frog. It's got black speckles in its back, and this one's a really good one. I catch a lot of bass on this one. Yep. That's why I use eight pound line. I used to use six pound all the time, and I started catching them bigger bass when I was jigging, and they kept breaking my crap off. So I went up to that eight. And I don't have no problem now. But that's that frog looking one. It's called Hornet. It's a pretty good one, too. Yeah, I, I took a – I like – my my thing to do from the boat is while I'm trolling and it gets a little low or we're trying to find them, uh, I got one good caster pole with a six-pound test line on it. I put a little beetle spin spinner bait, the gold one, and I put a little, say, 16th of an ounce jig head on there with a red shark truce body. And yeah. I'll sucker out there and i'll count the mississippis down yeah <laughs> going back and man i felt yep. slab like that you yep. because when you're trolling and if they're not hitting you you can throw something like that i call it bassing for crappie <laughs> i tell you another little secret you know that little bitty yellow that little you know when you go to walmart and you see that little bitty yellow grasshopper lure yeah that little, dude, that is a crappie catching son of a gun. It runs about this because at nighttime, what they do is if, if you're fishing around like marinas and stuff like I do, you know, for crappie and sand bass at night, well, you got them lights. And I tell you what, those crappie, they're up at the top of the water. They're feeding they're up always, at night. They're always looking up for the food. And that little bitty yellow grasshopper in the spring and the summer, man, you throw it out there around the marina with the lights and stuff, and you reel that sucker in underneath. Man, it, it's it. I seen an old, a kid doing that. What was it, two years ago, Katrisa? And I was like, what are you look? I said, come here, boy. I said, how are you catching all them crappie? He goes, sir. Oh, come and he's like, look, sir. And I'm like, no, nah, sir's my dad. Come here. I want to talk to you. And he showed me, he goes, no, this was my dad's lure that I got out of here. I thought, hell, you know, we use grasshoppers for bluegill. So I thought it was a lure. So I just, you know, sit out there, was playing around and he was catching them. So I went and bought one and I got one in my tackle box <laughs> for real from a, like a 13 year old kid. I used to have a little cricket jig that uh, it was like a top water popper and just float on top. And all I did yeah. was I'd pop, pop, pop. Yeah. You can see it come up here and grab it. Yep. Here's slides. another very good lure or another good jig that I use. It's called Penny Back. And if you use this one right here, this one, when I double jig like this one and that penguin, it's called uh, Tuxedo Shimmer. And when I use this one and the black and white one at night, I do really well. Because, you know, sometimes I'll use them moglows and I'll have a headlamp and I'll just take my stuff and put them in my hand and just moglow them like this. 
and just drop them down in the water. And I mean, I've caught some big crappie at night because crappie love feeding anywhere from 10, 11 o'clock at night to one or two in the morning. Yeah, there's a sundowners marina down there. They got a big light when the water's up a little bit and the spawn's kind of going on. You go down there and start throwing a jig down there beside the rocks down there and start pulling out some big old black slaves. But I'll be right back. I yeah. Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm going to jump off here. I got some stuff I got to do today. I just wanted to come out because you was doing crappie talking. You know how I am. You know what I mean? But everybody in chat and everybody, I'll see y'all later. Thanks, Rustic. Uh, you welcome. Have a good day. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I am back. Oh, look at that Griffith one air run. Hey, BK, I'm still up here with us. That is awesome. He gonna learn how to crop a fish. I know he can eat some crappie. But yeah, I mean, if y'all got any tips or what y'all do for crop, man, just put them down in there because this is what this is all about. It's the crappie uh, topics on this right here. Because uh, I, I love fishing for crappie. Uh, but whenever I went up there and I hooked my first skipjack, I was really hooked on that. And I thought, well, I'm going to start doing this right here because I transitioned from that. Like I said, my fall all died. I went to that and catfishing. Uh, and then I got hooked on that skipjack fishing, man. And then, and I like catfishing, so I started, so, you know, I'm catching all these skipjack. I'm going to start doing a little fishing on there, get back into catfishing and stuff. I mean, I've always used chicken liver, and then I started using that skipjack, and I was like, this is a whole different ball game. But, I mean, it'd be nice if we could use crappie for bait, but they had to be up to a certain, I think, but the bigger ones you shouldn't be able to use, but the smaller ones, like, if you catch one that's two or three, that's like six inches or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, I just don't see myself using a crappie for bait because, man, a crappie good eating. All right, Aaron, you have a good one. So, uh, but a lot of states do allow crappie for uh, catfishing, but not me, buddy. I, I I like putting that out there, feeling that, that hit come up there and hit that. I've seen that floater go down. I mean, I've caught so many up there on Wapapello that, uh, during the spawn that I used to have his five inch, I uh, was four and a half inch cigar floater and it was neon green. I mean, the color of my lettering up here. And I've caught so many of them, seen that floater go under, boom, just bam, 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 catching big slabs. I mean, 14, 15, 13 inch crappie, sometimes 16s. And, uh, and man, that at night time, I could see that I'm sleeping. I could see that floater go under, I do this. <laughs> They will nail you the cross in South Carolina if you got caught using crappie. Oh, they will here too, buddy. Oh, yeah. In Missouri, they'll nail you the cross. It, 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 if you just went and caught your limit of crappie, you brought them home, you filleted them out, and all you got is a body and a head. And if you cut that head off or try to use it for bait, I mean, if you got the body there with you or something, you know, you can prove that's where that came from, but they, they still frown on that. Man, it gets you in trouble. So is anybody planning on going crappie fishing this weekend? Y'all about ready for the spawn to start hitting? Because some of y'all uh, states, the weather's warming up a little bit. If the water start warming up just right, man, then crappie start spawning. Here, I think uh, our water's got to hit like 60 degrees. And for them to even, I mean, they start making beds around 55, 60. And then when it's like 60 to 65 here, I think 60 to 63, they start spawning on them beds because, uh, but they want that weather. They they know that that well, that water's gonna hold that temperature for several days. Uh, Mark said most fix most folks fish for crappie in the spring, but if you fish them year round, you will learn a lot from getting them off getting them off the bank to getting them in the abyss. Oh yeah, so that's one thing about our lake up here. Uh, they uh, 
a lot of your locals up there and your old timers, they go up there and they fish that lake all winter long. And so they pull out a lot of big crappie out of there all winter long because the lake's low. Unless we get a lot of rain that comes up. But more or less, it's down below summer pool. And so the crappie are more uh, congregated into one area, concentrated in one, in one area. And, uh, and so it makes it easier pickings. And so, man, they pull out a lot of big crappie up there in the winter. And when the spawn comes up or you're out there during the summer trying to troll, they're so scattered. There's not that many up there. But the best time to fish is in the wintertime up there because, man, they get that concentration point in that little channel running down through there. And you'll see people off, and then off the deep points and in the channels just tearing them up. Here in a short while, anything that floats will be on the lake. Here in a short while, anything that floats will be on the lake. It's going to be in the 30s up there. Wow. Man, it was 71 yesterday. It's supposed to be up in the 70s and 60s next few days. But we got some storms supposed to roll in. Uh, Saturday's supposed to be nice. So I think I'm going to go catfish on Saturday. Because next week, I want to try to start going after some skipjack. After ice out, we can catch them, though. Man, you can go out there during the ice, but the waters are froze. You just have to present your your stuff a lot slower. I guess a lot of crappie in the wintertime on wax worms. I'll take a tip at a uh, jig, a black and sharp truce jig with a wax worm, and I catch quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, crappie on that. But we got a place up here. It's a man-made pond thing. They call it Otter Slough. They stock it with crappie, and most of the crappie in there, are, you be lucky to catch one ten inch. I mean, most of them are just because when they stock it, them locals know, and boy, they get in there with the boats and they just clear that lake out a little. And it's not even a lake; it's like a pond. I mean, it's not very big at all. Very shallow. I mean, I think the deepest part probably eight feet somewhere out there. But it is snaky. Snaky and turtles, man. Bad. <laughs> you know, like my new catfish rig I rigged up? Uh-huh. I like that. I'm going to try it out Saturday. But yeah, man, I crappie fishing is uh I think I do the I do the eat crappie and I would catfish any day. I mean I'm not knock catfish, I love catfish, but uh, when, it, when it comes to that crappie though, man, I just love that crappie. What do y'all prefer, catfish or crappie when you're eating? If you have put it this way, if you had catfish right here, crappie right here, which one would you go for? First, me, I'm gonna go for the crappie. Uh, uh, just like BKM's got his mic turned off. After ice out, we can catch some though. Yep, crappie, bluegill, brim. Yep, then the, did the cats. Oh, look at there, Chris. Andy said he'd take a bite of each. <laughs> I don't want to mix the flavors between the two. That's for sure. I, I mean, I, if, if there's fried crappie there, I'm going to get that first. That's definitely. And bluegill. Man, I like eating bluegill, too. But I want to keep bluegill big enough that I can fillet out. I don't want to cook them whole. Golden Krispies. <laughs> hey, good morning, Uncle Don. Uncle Don should have some good crappie up there where he lives at. I actually prefer the flavor of brim more than crappie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bluegill is the top of my list as far as eating fish. I like bluegill, crappie, then catfish. I used to eat a lot of bass, small bass that weighed a pound, half pound. Uh, largemouth bass and smallmouth bass. I never, well, I never had smallmouth, just largemouth. 
And uh, I used to like that because it's got more of a sweet, sweeter taste to it. But I, I give that up. I don't eat it no more. White perch is also, oh, man. Talk about white perch. What's white perch? I thought she meant perch in general. I thought she was meaning the perch in general, the ones that's yellow, has got the little black stripes on it. Now that's if I they used to be plentiful around here, but they ain't no more. But if we can get hands on that, all the rest of that fish will go out the door. I'll eat some perch now. The perch, good. what do y'all call it? White perch drum. <laughs> I grew up on bluegill, cooked whole, just cut heads off. Yep, I have too. That's how we used to cook them. Until I discovered the invention of the filet knife. There we go. You can catch a lot of shell crackers on red worms. They like better than not crawlers. Yeah, I catch uh, quite a few of them down there in uh, South Carolina on the crickets. 922 Crawfish Barbecue. We're just talking about a. Uh, like a panfish, like crappie, bluegill, how we catch them, what we use, the tricks we have, the techniques. Mine's not that, it's not that uh, uh, sophisticated. Like I said, I use just a, a three inch slip floater. I adjust this three different ways for how aggressive or light I want the jig to move. Uh, use a, Floaters, a uh, little rubber bead stop to adjust my depth. Throw out there, and I'm constantly doing this, making that jig dance as it goes across there. I'm keeping pretty good, Leon. Keep pretty good, man. I'm sore from yesterday from catching them fish and casting stuff, but uh, I'm uh, keeping pretty good. I'm sunburned too. <laughs> Face is sore. Anyway, they come in my boat. <laughs> Spotted bluegills. I guess I, oh, you must be talking about the uh, the pumpkin seed bluegill. Uh -huh. oh. AK Crappie. We call yellow perch Eisenhower's. Not sure how that got started. I heard somebody else on here call them Eisenhower's. I, didn't, I thought they was talking about the president or something. I like the fish the most. <laughs> Just see if Uncle Don will come up. Hey, Don, you, uh, you see my uh, videos of my, uh, some of the big cats I caught yesterday? Because to me, those are giants. I mean, I know there's bigger ones out there and there's monsters out there. But to me, those are those are monsters too. I mean, uh, I can sit there and catch 20 pounders all day long and just love every minute of it. I mean, not even wonder, man. It's like, oh, man, where's the 50, 60, 80 pounders at? Uh, I can catch them 20 pounds all day long because I would let fight boy. Yeah, I'll leave that pole being. Welcome back, Emily. Hey, there's my UK brother. Hello. How you keeping? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Hey, you good, brother. My UK brother. Walleye Walters. <laughs> Walters. Walters. Okay, that's the name they got for him up there. Not had, not yet had Doc most of the day, and and that's so, so Whoa, snowstorm. That ain't no good. Hello, Emily. Welcome back, Emily. That's one Hello. thing I'd like to try to catch is some walleye. Uh, oh, Don. Hopefully, Chrissy, I can get up to Indiana Ohio. Chris. And go fish with uh, John Order, and uh, he said we'll do some walleye fishing up there. Hey, there's everybody's favorite uncle right there. Uncle Don. Don. Good morning, America. 
Good morning, America. <laughs> Got tired of typing. <laughs> um, drug out today. It's, it's a long day yesterday. Hey, uh, speaking of that, uh, let me get this in first. Indiana Chris, Summer Bluegills, a deep water two hook sinker on bottom catch two at time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rustic, catch that 20 pounder on six foot ultra light and six pound test. That's a lot. Hey, I had a six pound light action rod, uh, six pound, a light action rod, seven foot, and uh, had a small tip on the end of it. I had, uh, at the time, I had a six pound test line on there and i was catching crappie throwing out i had to put six on there so i could get out from the bank far enough to this tree that was partially sticking out of the water and i knew it was holding some big crappie in there and boats can't get in there there was no boat zone and I, you had to be able to zing it way out there and so i finally rigged it up the way i wanted it loaded out there on yellow and white jig and i'm sitting there Bopping it every now and then. Catch some nice crappie up around this thing when I get it. Because the water was going right around it. So when I get it just right, they go right up around the side of that tree. They hit. Well, I was pulling it, and I was pulling it back a little bit, and I'd move it a little bit. Well, this buffalo hit it. And, uh, man, you talk about a fight. Man, I fought that dude for, uh, I can't know how long I fought that dude. It was one heck of a fight. Got it in on the bank, a guy along the scales, and that dude weighed 50 pounds on the mark. It was the biggest buffalo I've ever seen in my life. And I thought, well, wow, because I'm over six foot, and I'm holding him up by the, by his head at my chest, and his tail was on the ground. He was a big, and he was wide. Damn. And, of course, Lake Wapapello holds a lot of huge, huge buffalo in there. But that, that, here, that was the coolest and the best fight I ever had on a fishing pole right there. People up here, they broke the state record for – Big Head Buffalo uh, last summer twice, but they're just now starting to get into bow hunting for them. And they were, uh, I forget, over 50 pounds. They yeah. were big boys like that. Well, I'm not into state records and world yeah. records and stuff like that, you know. And so I, I, I had the lady, I had this little just flip phone and I had to take a picture of it. And that's the only picture I had of this. And then I released it back in the water, got it, pushing it back and forth, got it going, and it took off finally. Uh, but, uh, and I thought, well, yeah, I got this picture right here, and that was years ago. And that phone, I kept it in here, and I had the charger for it, and I said, well, the picture will always be on there. Man, I can't even locate the phone anymore. And I'm like, man, where is that phone? Because if I ever find it, I won't try to get my best get that picture off of it, because Man, I could almost ride this thing if I could have put a saddle on it in the water. <laughs> it's just that big <laughs> buffalo. Yeah, it's pretty it, had a, it had a mouth on that dude that big around. I was like, that you put yeah. a baseball in. I was like, Why? but he hit that jig, man. <laughs> you know, you'll find the buffaloes around here. They're out in the middle of the, or out in the deeper water, but up towards the surface. The common carp will be up in the shallows in the back bays. Oh but yeah, yeah. They seem to like the deeper water because they don't. They eat algae and plankton, and they don't uh, muck in the in the bottom and pull plants up like the common carp does. Yep, yep. Hey, well, welcome everybody in. It's came in. Appreciate. It. I seen J Dog in here earlier. I hollered at him. J Dog. Right. Hey, Thank Mark. You. Uh, so, uh, I'll talk to him later. Uh, that's another one that on my way back from Ohio, I want to go by there and fish with J Dog. I, I think uh, J Dog's a cool dude, man, and he knows his waters and stuff like that. And, and if we don't even catch no fish, man, just sitting on the boat shooting the bull, man, that, that would be a pretty awesome. Hey, Chris, Mark. Behind here too. Four, 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 Good morning. Indiana yeah, Chris. get the word out. You know, we're here talking about crappie and stuff because this this is what we got to do. As 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 a, uh, I don't I, I've never considered myself a catfish community guy. I consider myself a fishing community guy. Uh, 
a lot of guys that strictly all they do is catch catfish. And there's all guys they don't do nothing but bass, crappie, bluegill. They don't do catfish. And some guys they do it all. They try to catch you know many different species where they can, at whatever's that that the run is going at that time on that species. Which I can't blame them, man. I, I love catching different kinds of fish. Hey, Coastal said listening and working. Good morning, Coastal. So yeah, we're talking crappie in here. You get know somebody out there that's a uh, subscriber to you, and they, they love that crappie. If they're on, tell them, hey, we're over here talking crappie. Come on in. Hook up. Let's, let's uh Like fishing here, Rusty, uh, you never know what you're going to catch. Same bait, you'll catch <laughs> almost – most of the species we have, but I appreciate it, Andy. I didn't get out to do any crappie fishing last year, but uh, the year before is the first time I really found a place I can catch them. And we have the black crappie, and I kind of knew they were in there, I just didn't go after them. But throughout the day, I caught four or five walleye fishing, and they were all uh, morning, Ellen. They were all uh. Yeah, coastal second Good morning, Uncle Don. 12 to 14 inches. Morning, Ellen. Good morning, uh, everyone. Well, it's Good like morning. up here at the Dink Hole, you know, uh, I've made no bones about it. I've advertised it. I'm trying to find the Dink Hole monster. I know that there is some huge fish in there. And, but it's getting close to the stropper run. And uh, when the big stroppers start moving in, the big ones, uh, it don't matter if you're trying to catfish there. You, you just can't catfish there at that time because uh, you're lucky you're, if you fish with a big chunk of skipjackets. Last year I caught one. I didn't know the striper run was fixed to start, and I throwed it out there, a big chunk of skipjack, and that big striper, 28 inch long, hit that skipjack before it even hit the bottom. And I finally, I had to leave because they kept, I mean, as soon as I throwed it out and it started falling, oh, they was coming in there trying to hit that bait, and I was like, I got to get out of here. I'm not after uh, these stripers. I'm after catfish. And, uh, so I had to relocate <laughs> that day. Yeah, that's that's like my little dink hole I have. Uh, it changes uh, about every week. You know, first catfish will be up in there, and then the walleye, and, yeah. and then the trout, and then the salmon. And it just constantly changing of what's up in the tail race and yeah and the brown trout uh they caught the state record brown trout out of there he on an eighth ounce jig huh. and he was 32 pounds i believe wow so i know there's a monster catfish laying down there it'll probably be a channel but He's well I know if I'm going to get one, a good chance that's where he's laying. I just can't get my line laid in there just right yet because it occurred. Uh, Bear Eagle, what kind of shad are you going for? Are you going for gizzard shad, uh, yellow threadfin shad? If I was uh, you, if you was going to try to get yellow threadfin shad, I'd use cast net. Uh, because most normally when you, you catch yellow threadfin shad, uh, I don't know if they hit a little worm or not on a really tiny hook, but I've, I've snagged a bunch of them before. Shed is good for They start the gizzard shed. In and I caught them on a sabiki rigs on real micro hook, micro sabiki rigs. They'll hit them. I know they hit them because I've caught them before. They stocked gizzard shad up I here. I brought on quite far as that says anything. I'll know more shortly. Okay. That'd be awesome to catch some shad like that. Uh, here, we normally catch our shad here with just a catch net. We'll throw it out. Uh, I'll throw it out until <laughs> I get about 20, 25 shad. <laughs> I'll pick all day long on that shad. Hey, there's Andy Gross. Good morning, morning, Andy. He said, good morning, everyone. And Mark said, uh, hook set you, Cleveland. Yeah, because uh, that's a good deal, Mark, because Cleveland, uh, yeah, 351, it does a lot of crop fishing. <laughs> fishing from the boat. 
Outdoors Addiction. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in. What? Oh, my dog's laying there snoring. <laughs> I thought that was you. Yeah, but today's today's topic is uh is crappie because uh supposed to have this yesterday, but I went kept fishing instead, and I'm glad I did. I know a lot was looking forward to uh, yesterday morning to this edition of Coffee Tuesday because of the crappie, but man, that that weather's that beautiful. I cannot turn it down because I'm not man. real big on fishing at, at 40 mile an hour wind. I mean, I'm just That's not good. Good. I mean, you can catch fish at 40 mile an hour wind, but I don't want to sit out there and fight it and stuff like that. So yesterday was extremely beautiful. I went and caught 16, got it done, and. I got one video that's going to come up in about a day or so in a, a me fighting that 25 pounder. And, uh, and if you listen real closely, you'll, you'll hear the drag on it go off every night. And cause, uh, you'll be able to tell when I'm reeling it, you can hear it. Then I'll stop reeling. You see that pole be like that. Then you'll hear it. Yeah. You start <laughs> Yeah, I, I miss uh, when I was in Virginia, we did a lot of crappie and shell crackers and uh, uh, croakers is one of our ones that we had a lot of fun catching. But yeah, we yeah. pretty much always just went for the uh, crappie and the other stuff we'd catch, you know, along with the gar. But, now, what uh, Coastal's calling history sh hickory shed, that's that's hairy game. That's what we call like skipjack. Yeah, but it's it's a, it's, a, it's the same category. But uh, I, I, I guess I mean to me they don't look no different. They look the same to me. I don't know. Well, unless they're laying side by side, I couldn't tell you the difference. But I know hickory. I I'm, I'm subscribed to the channel, and he subscribed to me. And he does a lot of that. He catches hickory shad all the time. And I told him, I said, man, that, that's skipjack. And he said, no, it's hickory shad. And I said, that's skipjack. And I told him one time, I said, you're going to have to, we're going to, I'm going to have to get a skipjack and get with you and take a skipjack and put them side by side. You show me the difference. <laughs> I Good said, morning, I Randy. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that. Hey, welcome back, Randy. He said, okay, got you playing while driving. Randy, where are you headed off to? All right, Leon. Thanks for coming up my panel, buddy. But, yeah, uh, uh, crappie fishing is a huge, huge industry. And I mean, everybody knows that. Bass fishing is the biggest, then it's the crappie, then it's the catfishing. And the catfishing industry is just now coming on good and strong for the last, I'm going to say, 10 years. And uh, it has really grown and come up. And the crappie has come up, and it's like hit a null. There's nothing new coming out for anything because everything they've got right now works so well. Uh, the problem is it's trying to find the crappie in your area. A lot of places don't have good crappie fishing. Thank you, Chris. Don has 268 hook sets. Help him grow, please. Yes, yes, yes. Uncle Don is a good guy. Y'all need to catch up with him every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Uncle Don's Coffee Time. Yep, 9 o'clock Central. Yep, 9 o'clock Central. I keep forgetting he's yep. Central Time Zone like I am. <laughs> <laughs> You know, one of these days I'm going to pop in on you and you're going to, we're going to go sit in the bank and chew some fat. <laughs> oh, that, that'd be awesome. But we used to, I used to use a jig head that had the little V wire with the little spinner blades on top. I don't remember all the fancy names. I just know what they look like. And I'd use a white, curly tail on it and throw it out there and just let it sink and boy them crappie would just nail it and I had so much fun doing that that and my fly rod I had caught a lot of them on my fly rod uh -huh. hey India it's Indiana that's on the other side of Illinois ain't it ain't that between Illinois and Ohio I'd have to look at a map to 
to see isn't it. That but, isn't that crazy with this YouTube community? Uh, community, you got to look at the map every once in a while. It's, yeah. Uh, so okay. Uh, how far is that? Where's that at? <laughs> how many states over is that? <laughs> Mister Twister or Bill Spins? Hey, I like Bill Spins spinner baits, but I take their jig head and the, their Bill Spin off. And I'll put my own on there, and it works a lot better. Yeah, it's in between Ohio and Illinois. Yep. Yeah, I think the actual biggest crappie I caught was just over two pounds. And we caught quite a few that were between a pound and two pounds. But those were nice. They... They fried up real good. <laughs> yeah. But here, everybody fishes for walleye that they just ignore the crappie. So it's hard to hear about where there are some crappie. And, and then in the winter, when they go ice fishing, they're all about the yellow perch. Nobody uh, fishes for them then either. But Yeah. Indiana, I, I'm 90, about 90 miles east of Chicago. You ain't far enough away, buddy. Not for Chicago. <laughs> and last year, I went to go catch some crappie, and my place that I go was high and dry because the lake was so low. But yeah, it just I, didn't dawn on me. Where you was on that live, and uh, you, we was fishing in that, uh, that one tournament. And you was running your pot too across there and running shallow water and he was you was kicking up some mud. <laughs> yeah. Brand new prop and it was more rock than it was mud. <laughs> yeah. But you he, he was throwing the water, but you got off there, but man, I was like <laughs> Yeah, I didn't stop to think. I should have just had the boys get out and push me off there. But what happened is we went in there and we marked some huge fish. Because right at the end of the uh, cement part, before they washed it all out, it was 80 feet deep in there. Now yeah. it's about 40, and then it comes up to two to three feet all the rest of the way down until you get in the river. So we made it up there, and then the core quit dumping water out of the dams. <laughs> the level went down, and that's why we, we had a hard time getting back out. Didn't dawn on me that they would do that. Well, what's your uh, what's your nephew Brandon doing these days? My grandson Brandon. Brandon? Yeah, your grandson. Yeah. Oh, girl in it. Got a girlfriend. Don't see much of him anymore now. <laughs> huh. But I know we don't we don't see him much on we don't see him at all on YouTube anymore. Yeah. And so figured uh, that uh, he's, yeah, found, he's found some kind of pasture to lay in. So. <laughs> Uh, he'll be there when it warms up around here. I I gave his girl, he brought his girlfriend up a couple weeks ago, and I gave her a pole. And it's a it's a nice pole, but I didn't pay hardly anything for it. It's got a big spinning reel. It's a seven foot uh, spinning rod. It's I think it was a medium heavy. I like the pole, but the reel had a little button on it, and you yeah. flip the you flip the button and put it in the rod holder. And when a fish hits it, it starts beeping and flashing. And I've never found a reel like that again. So I gave it to her and uh, told her that if he ain't going to go with me, she she can. But Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's. I think once spring breaks, I'll start seeing a lot more of them. But. Everybody hunkers down in the winter. We we started yesterday afternoon. I was just starting to get snow flurries, and I went in for a well, doctor's appointment. When I came out, I had about an inch and a half snow on my car, and then the wind came up, and it's still blowing and snowing today. Well, everybody that's in chat and stuff, uh, what is your favorite setup for crop fishing? Uh, what do you like to do the best? Uh if you fish in a bank, what's y'all's favorite setup on that? I mean, there's, <coughs> there's a whole lot you can set up, but a lot of people set up their stuff a lot different. 
Chris, she's within earshot. She's in the other room, and I oh, think the it? dog's training her. <laughs> yep, in there, Chris. It up, Paulette. How you doing, Paulette? Talk to Paulette. Oh, India, she's always there. You think she's going to go off and leave Uncle Don there by himself? Ain't no tell what kind of trouble he get into. I don't know. Sometimes she sends me out here to the garage and makes me stay out here. <laughs> <laughs> stay up under my feet. Go out in the garage. <laughs> but as long as the winter don't get too long, we've been cooped up together. But I like using a drop shot for crappie or a bobber. If I yeah. if the weather, if the wind permits, my favorite is to use a bobber. I I nothing I like more is watching that bobber take off. And, oh yeah, love it. Uh, that's my favorite. Unless I'm trolling, uh, every now and then I'll cast a little beetle spin spinner bait out and try to bass for crappie, but. Mm -hmm. uh, and nothing beats that floater because I can uh, I can take that cigar float, put that on there, that slip floater, and I can control the movement of the jig. So yeah. wait over there, wait for the boat, and work it back, and usually catch them like that. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's fun. I, I new jigs, curly tail jigs, or some live bait on Arbidine J hooks, crickets, wet worms, leaf worms on a bobber. Here it's usually minnows or jigs you know my favorite uh bait is uh the european night crawlers a lot of people mistake them for red wigglers but they get uh a lot thicker a lot fatter but they don't get real long and boy those suckers you throw them in a brown paper bag on a hot day and all it does is make them live layered and yeah. you put it in the palm of your hand and hold it out, and they'll curl up and they'll flip, and they'll flip right out of your hand. But <laughs> after a half hour or so, I pull them in, and, and they're still wiggly, where some of the other ones are pretty much dead by that length of time. Yeah. I took a tote and put some uh, <clears throat> peat moss, and not peat moss, but Put some stuff in there, and, and I bought some from one of the worm dealers, and I got like 500 of them, and it's going on th three years now, and they just reproduce fast enough, as fast as what I can use them. And when summer comes, then I start feeding them heavier, and they start plumping up real nicely. But Yeah. <clears throat> But I'm trying to look at getting some uh, African night crawlers this year for. They're supposed to be bigger than the Canadians, but use them for catfish. Yeah. But I use my fly rod and I use a sinking tip on it and lay it out there, and it just slowly sinks and. Okay. Keep them busy for a minute. I got to go release some of this coffee. All right. Well, ladies and gents, what are we going to talk about Rusty while he's gone? <laughs> it's been uh, up here. It's just I have a great big box full of crankbaits, and I don't have any faith in them. I use them a little bit and and then I go back to uh, fishing with cut bake or worms all the time. Do worms? I'm not sure what. I've never had anything that really said do worms. Oh, Canadian crawlers. <clears throat> yeah, they they sell a lot of those around here. Ultralight, small swim bait, beetle baits. Dew worms. What was a dew worm? I think that's what they call the Canadian night crawler. Mark said with well, an ultralight small spinner bait, beetle spin, road runner, small crankbaits, regular rods, anything from minnows to jigs, propeller, anything that may work. Uh, yeah, uh, here 
about uh, it's been about 10, 12 years ago, moved to team. They start putting a little, I mean, these things, the little crankbaits are about, I mean, they're little bitty. And I start running them on my trolling poles and I started catching crappie like mad with them things. I never caught one throwing it out there, but I've caught them on my trolling pole uh, with a weighted and it's coming out about a foot and a half from the weight, maybe two feet, and it's down 10 foot. And I've caught them like that. I still, uh, everybody's probably heard the story, but I still laugh and chuckle when we talk about crappie poles. I bought Paulette a real nice St. Croix pole and, and a real nice reel for it just to go crappie fishing. And when my grandson came out, my son said, well, he'll need a pole. So yeah, I took it and Paulette took him down the river and taught him how to cast it because he only used those little uh, uh, short poles, the kitty poles. Boy, it didn't take him about 10 casts and he had it down pat. Well, when he left, he just assumed it was his. <laughs> so he took it with him. And then on the trip back to the West Coast, my son put it in the back and broke the end off. <laughs> well, uh, I used to have this little jig, this little plus jig, looked like a minnow. It was kind of like a a white ivory color with a black stripe that run down, kind of faded down the side just a little bit. But it had two little fins on the side. And when you pull through there, the tail does this. And man, I've caught some nice slabs over that thing. Just throw it out there and just pull it back underneath the float of about six to eight foot. And man, they just, you don't pull it far and they hit it. Yeah, Randy, I got worms. <laughs> Get ready to order some more and retire the box I have and put it in my uh, flower uh, garden, not the garden, but. They don't last in the winter up here. They The winters will kill them off. So I'm going to put them in with my raised herb bed. and That should do real well in there this summer. Get some fresh ones. It's funny. I open it up and there'll be a, all kinds of little tiny one-inch ones where the castings have hatched. And so it's just a continuous supply of them. I keep them in the garage so they don't freeze out. Yeah. Said, uh, and he said, Don, make an extra race bed just for the worms. I thought about that, but. <laughs> and I thought, well, I could bring that in. It would be a lot better. The only problem is, is keeping them in there at night. <laughs> That's why his wife sends him to the garage to save her carpet. <laughs> yeah. If I keep a light on them, they'll stay in there. But if if the turn the lights off at night, there they'll be all over in the morning. Huh. That's why most people keep a lid on their stuff. <laughs> yeah. So that whole toad is just all worm castings right now. Well, that's and, that's the best time to catch worms anyway, is at night time. Yeah, not, they come up on top of the grass to breathe, and they know that they're not going to be eat on by birds because birds can't see them. Yeah, we have the angle worms, but like the cr not Canadian crawlers, they're so touchy with temperature, and if you don't keep them cool when you're fishing, they die on you, and that got to be kind of frustrating for me. Says you gotta. Has to have a bottle on it with drain holes and a screen to cover the drain hole. Be my luck, a mole would dig up in there, eat through the screen, and eat all my worms. You know how to get rid of those moles? Just take some juicy fruit gum and uh, tear it in little tiny pieces and scatter it around your yard. And for, I don't know what it does. I'm not a scientist, but. The bowls will disappear. I don't know if they eat it and it kills them or what, but I tried it last year. I, I noticed I had some bowls and I put it out and kind of sewed it around on the grass and near the holes if I could find them. And I didn't have any more mole activity the rest of the summer. Huh. 
Yeah, that's what I figured that the holes they dig is it's just round for their body. And I figured they eat that gum and when they fart bubbles, it traps them in there and it kills them. <laughs> Whatever it does, I don't care as long as they, they're gone. But I just catch them moving and I jump on them with a shovel and dig them up right quick. <laughs> then I'll make a video of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to do that. I've never found one actually active, but when we lived out of the town, it was always so bad because the badgers would come in at night and the coyotes and other stuff. Well, they'd get those moles active and then they'd start digging and pretty soon you got these huge holes all over the place. Yeah. <clears throat> So this year, you know, where I go crappie fishing, it didn't dawn on me when I moved back here. I, I avoided the area because it had all these treetops sticking up out of the water. And then after I caught that one crappie, it was like, huh, you know, I've been missing an awesome opportunity to go and fish around these trees. So, and then last year, the lake was so low, I couldn't get in there. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it this spring, and that it's lake should start spring. coming up before yeah. ours does, because all our runoff will go into that lake, and we have to wait for the Yellowstone and the Little Missouri to fill up our basin. Fort Peck keeps the Missouri River, keeps their levels real constant, so they won't release any extra for us yeah can't blame them i mean ours fluctuates 20 25 feet from year to year because they're so poor at regulating the water oh they got poor at regulating ours too they they tell ours uh they charge you to, to launch a boat in it which is fine. I can understand that. But they tell you it's a non-fishing lake all the time. They say it's flood control only. But they got a lot of rules and regulations on there when it comes to fishing. Though. Yeah, it's one thing with a state-run lake and a core-run lake. It's the Corps of Engineers ones. They got some of the stupidest rules I've ever heard. Yeah. <clears throat> but the core office is in Omaha, so they they really don't care what we're doing up here. You know, it's and everything has to be run through there. And, you know, it's it's like the good old boys club. If our people aren't down there shaking hands and and rubbing elbows, we're gonna be just forgotten. Yeah. And North Dakota people aren't really like that very much. <laughs> what did Randy say? Uh, as a kid, we had several bathtubs in spring house. That's Mark uh, filled with pea dirt. Yeah, we had them like that, ground coffee and stuff like that. Uh, we made a little shocker to get worms up in the daytime. Yeah, I've made some uh, shockers like this too, and I made a real good one. And a buddy of mine said, man, I'm having trouble finding worms. You got a shocker still. And I said, yeah. I said, when you get done with it, bring it back. I ain't seen that dude in five years. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, that's what I, I do. To feed. Stuff out anymore. That's what I do to feed my worms is I grind up oyster shells and uh, cornmeal. And I uh, can't remember what the other one is. But I put them in one of those things that just pulverize, chops it up super, super powdery and I just sprinkle that on top, and in the morning, if it's gone, I know I didn't feed too much, and and boy, it'll plump them worms up fast. Oh yeah. That's the same hook. Yeah, if we had the right weather conditions, it'd be nice to take one of those raised flower beds and put a screen in catch all the castings coming out the bottom. Let's 
So I got to retrain myself on how to catch crappie again. I'm excited about it this year. Last couple of years, my fishing has been next to none due to my physical health. And this year, I'm probably better than I have been in years. So I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> we have one little bridge that I'm anxious to get under. And... Uh, I'm leaving this out to die. Is it okay? They're, they're, oh, sorry. And, uh, take Paul out there and, and, uh, just take and sit under there. There should be some real good crappie fishing, but from shore, you can't get out there. The rocks are so big, and with my, physical health, I couldn't get across them without getting hurt. <laughs> I tried. I know I get hurt, but this year I'm thinking by the time the snow melts, I'll be able to walk across the rocks and get down in there. Nothing like catching crappie. There's supposed to be a couple good little lakes to catch some crappie around here, but I haven't found them. Good morning, Whiskers. Welcome. How are you doing today? Nice to see you come in my feed. <laughs> I got the whole show. I put uh, timed Rusty out so he can't. He'll be back later. Period. <laughs> and then we had her, so she, you know, bass at. <laughs> She's had bass. Um, do that. Oh. My lovely wife just refilled my coffee cup. So now I'm ready to go for another round. So, how, okay. anybody got any good tips on for me to Hold refresh my memory? I got someone out here in the driveway. Hold the port down. <laughs> uh, I see you sneak in there once in a while. Somewhere, anyhow. I do so many different sites and support so many different sites that sometimes I forget where I talk to people at. Yeah, Whiskers, you had to just load up and come up and spend a week with me fishing and, and count how many different species of fish you can catch using the same techniques and it's always fun. <clears throat> Serena's got me to the point that I'm thinking about doing some carp fishing. We always tried to avoid doing that up here. As a kid, I enjoyed it. But so uh, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of thinking someday I'm going to go for it. I know there's just huge common carp out there, and then we have the buffalo head, and and they get pretty good. You can stand where by the dam where the cement walls are, and watch schools of them swimming around all the time, along with the paddlefish, and they eat the algae off the cement walls and the. Uh, plankton and stuff in the water and they just swim back and forth all day long. But if you catch a big one there, it's about a oh, 25 foot lift from the water to the top where you're fishing. 
I don't know if I caught a big one, how it actually get it in. But I do know the crappie, the black crappie come up in there once in a while and everybody fishes for walleye so they don't try to target them and this year I think I'll put more effort into it. There's so many walleye here, people, we stocked uh, 1.2 million walleye last year throughout the state. I think they're just kind of going nuts with it. I wish they'd spend more time stocking the crappie, bluegill. Uh, I wish they'd reintroduce the blue catfish in the river system up here, but I've argued with them on that and they won't do it. They keep saying we not going to do it because they're not a game fish. And it's like, well, make them a game fish. But then they'll take a non-native species and and spend their whole efforts into it. But and like last year, we stocked uh, 500,000 salmon into the lake. But won't do anything to reestablish the blue cats or the crappie or stuff like that that there's more to fishing than just fishing for walleye or salmon <clears throat> the rules up here are real picky on uh on bait, where you can get it, what you can use. <laughs> yeah, they, they whine about the zebra mussels invasion coming into the state. But the uh, blue catfish are, are in the drum are two species that will eat the heck out of those zebra mussels. So they should think ahead a little bit and think, well, wow, if they're coming in the state, maybe we need to research that. No, Mark, they just they just don't get it. It's they sit at their desk and they run computer models and they go strictly by that and and they don't get out there and walk through the water and, and actually look and see what's really going on. And But it's that shake the right hands, rub the right elbows type thing. And if all their friends are really into walleye fishing, then they think that's the greatest thing since cornflakes. That's the government way, unfortunately. <laughs> we don't have any of the silver carp up here. They've been able to keep them stopped, but there's the dams don't have any way to get around them so so far we had some come up into the james river but then the next year it seemed like they had all died out so i don't know if it's the cold winters that's keeping them out or or what good morning helen how are you today I took the liberty and timed Rusty out for a while. Told him to get his stuff together and get some coffee and wake up. <laughs> but I added, uh, took the plunge this year and I got myself, it came yesterday. Good morning, Lauren. 
and I uh, got myself a power station. I, every time I went to go live, I had five different batteries, my camera, my external batteries, my phone batteries, made sure everything was charged up before I go. And every time I get out there, it was always one that I forgot to charge. And so I bought a power station and I can put everything in there that I want to charge in one, one battery. And then I can leave it plugged in and it'll run all my lights, my cameras, my phones. It's got AC outlets on it, so it has a pure sine wave inverter on it. And so far, I've been playing with it and running it through its spaces, and I'm really happy with it that I only have to carry one battery. So I'm looking forward to that this year. I can take it out. But I need to get a... See if I can find some kind of USB to USB extension cord. And I don't really remember ever seeing anything like that. I've seen you can buy 20 foot cords, but then I'd have to buy one for every like my camera and my lights and everything it'd be nice to just have one extension cord that I could plug in the USB and set my lights up further away from the camera and, but then I'd have to have one for my wife's iPhone one for my phone one for my lights and that ends up adding up. Good morning, Moon. And how are you today? This fine Navy day. Well, it's not so fine. <laughs> What's some of the biggest crappie you guys have caught? When I was in Virginia, I fished Kerr Lake, and that was years ago, and I was shocked at how many four and five pound crappie they catch out of that lake, that and Lake Gaston. I never knew that, uh, and I still, my mind can't picture a crappie that big. See, yours is about like mine, Chris. Just about perfect uh, pan size. <laughs> when I was in Maryland, we did a lot of crappie and bluegill fishing there too, but I was uh, at Fort Meade right in between Baltimore and D.C. and all the lakes there, the Crappie and bluegill were so small that if you caught a six, eight incher, you were pretty excited, but most of them were smaller than that. You would catch a lot of them, but what a pain to try and make a meal. You're only getting silver dollar size fillets on them. That's a nice bluegill. I, uh, I took my fly rod one time with the, and went out to a lake and I just put a tiny hook and a worm on the end of it and would flip it out there from the boat into the trees and stuff. And man, I had a bluegill hit at one time and I wasn't paying that much attention and he yanked on it so hard he actually backlashed my fly reel <laughs> and that was the biggest uh, one I caught I don't know how long it was it was probably 
six to eight inches, maybe. Hmm. Oh, the snakehead are good eating. I, I haven't heard much about them. They, when I was there, it was kind of before that time. Towards the evening, we'd catch all kinds of those uh, eels. And by the time you get them in, you'd have a line that was probably half inch thick with all the slime. I hated those. Huh. Interesting. Females have white and purple bellies and the male have gold and yellow bellies. See, that's all the things <clears throat> when I was younger, all the things I never ever paid attention to or really cared about, but now it's so much more to fishing and learning that it's still a lot of fun, just the learning and trying different things and Yeah, once you get them on a hook, you, you can't get them off. They just, <laughs> I'd never been one to grab a hold of them, and I just didn't like all the slime. Now I look back on it, man, should have kept them for bait. Hey, casters. We're just talking about doing some crappie fishing and anything else that pops in people's minds. Yeah, Mark, it's, it is, you know, from the weather to the equipment to the fish and stuff, it just, I feel like I got such a vast amount of knowledge and my grandkids could care less but someday when they get to be my age they're going to say oh, i wish i'd listened to grandpa about this <laughs> my granddaughters are the only ones that really go with me to learn and they're probably the better fishermen my grandsons, you know how they are when they get to be teenagers. They, they think girls are the most important uh, thing to learn. You fishing, Chris, or are you riding? Really, that's pretty cool, Mark. Yeah, it's you sit on the bank towards the evening and it's quiet and nobody around, and it's just amazing that some of the things you see, you know, whether it's feathered or furred and or scaled. <laughs> I enjoy it. It's always fun to watch a raccoon with her babies come along the shoreline and watch her teach them how to find food and stuff. And boy, they get chatting it up. And kind of nasty little critters, though, if you. 
they don't always run from you. And when they don't, uh, they're kind of vicious. <laughs> yeah, the old, old boy bought that boat off, back off of, uh, he's come down here to get it. He's going to use it to, uh, he wants to go crop fishing. I told him, I said, you know, the front deck's rotted out on that. I got to replace that as soon as it warms up so I can get it on the river. He goes, I know, I know. Why didn't you tell me when I used it? I fell through the damn thing. <laughs> I kind of broke my neck. I thought I was going to go off the side of that boat when I fell through that. I'm just glad I didn't have the camera turned on because I was just fixing to drop a rod down because I was drifting. And uh, I went to step, and I stepped to the middle of it, and it rotted, and I said, shh. Went through that off the one off the one side of the boat in Mississippi. I was like, good night. Yeah, towards evening, using my fly rod, I, uh, <laughs> I've caught a few bats. They see that fly in the air, and they swoop in and, Usually catch them in the wing or something. A few bats, a few bats. Bat fingers have consequences. <laughs> well, I seen about four bald eagles. They were flying around yesterday all over the place. Yeah. You know, people don't, some of them don't stop and think about it. You know, the bald eagle is pretty much uh, the big source of their food is fish. Oh, yeah. Fish, rabbit, if they can catch it. Yeah. Three. But you always find them around water sources that are usually pretty good at fishing. When the salmon come in, the bald eagles really congregate here well i haven't seen any attack in the water yet to get a fish but uh they're mostly flying around sitting in the trees chasing each other you know one time there was bald eagle where i was fishing and he was he was way off he was probably four or five hundred yards away on a pole and that looks good and I took and uh, was cleaning my fish, and I, I threw it right on the, the guts, right on the edge of the river. And as soon as it hit the edge of the water, that eagle was off that post, and he'd come and just glide in and, and wham, he'd pick it up and go. So there was a little bit of a bank. So I laid down that bank facing up, and did it again, and when he came in, I was trying to take pictures of him, but he looks like he's going slow, but he was cooking right along. Hey, that's, that's, that's awesome, two by two. That is awesome. I think I'm going to put a float on that. Hey, that's cool, two five two. A couple months ago, I went and put together boxes and I can't remember how many we put together like 750 boxes or something like that for then they took and put the food and stuff in them another day and but they weren't easy to put together they were pretty heavy duty boxes yeah and you had to do it just right But it was fun. It was there was probably eight, ten of us, and and we were cooking. We we were going as fast as we could. We wanted to get done and get out of there. Let me ask you guys: got that catfish cook set up right there? How far should I put that floater from that? I'd go about four inches, four to six. Four inches. Yeah, I got there. I very mind depending on how heavy my bait is and current and stuff. About like that? 
Yeah, it looks real good. I mean, it's it's only that part of the hook. Mm -hmm. Cause I want it to float that bait a little bit. You know, somebody was talking about being able to see active fish on their fish finders. And I, I see a lot of people make this mistake, but if the fish are laying flat on the bottom, they're not active feeders. The catfish will come up at least a foot or more off the bottom if they're actively feeding. Oh, yeah. And well, there was a, there was a, that can't be right. It's not, though. Now, there was a, like three of yesterday that I caught, they would literally, all right, Chris, thank you for coming in. Hey, Kesters. Hey, Chris, you have a good day, sir. What's he talking about? A pop-up. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's like uh, there was, uh, I guess about two or three yesterday, they were, uh, that pole would sit there and they'd go, About twice. And it was sitting there with a tight line going in the water. And it wouldn't move. I sat there and thought, come on, take it, big boy. Take it, take it, take it, take it. And I'm sitting there uh, thinking, well, I'll give it 10 minutes. Well, 10, 12 minutes go by. And I go over and I don't even pick the pole up. I just start slowly reeling. And all of a sudden, that pole would lay over like that there and start doing that. And it's like they hit it and just sat right on the bottom and did not move. Hey, look at there. It's John Order Outdoorsman, YouTube's Angler of the Year. What's up, John? Good morning, John. Okay, let's see what we got here now. There we go. I got a little rig set up. Got my little thing set up. I got some swivels on it. Because I was told that it probably needs swivels. I didn't listen. I'm listening now. <laughs> Looks like you got the same swivels as I do. Must have got them at the same place. <laughs> Walmart. Good Lord, not that get like that. I think they're all tangled up in there or something. Casters, that's just a, a float. Yeah, it's just it a, a, a three-inch cigar float. Just getting it re-rigged up, and uh, I got a new, I got a new rig that I'm trying out, and if it works great, be the next big thing, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John. No, that was for real. Don't you remember? <laughs> hey, Good morning, Greg. John had a dream that Don outfished me, but I realized it was just a dream. Uh, you <laughs> uh, uh, you I'm going to check and see if that old boy got that boat. You know, the only way to really compete one-on-one -on -one is if you're shoulder to shoulder and you're fishing the same body of water because Without chewing the fat and finding out who's the best at that, you don't know who's the best fisherman. Yeah, you know, I was saying about the finding uh, fish on the fish finder and how you tell if they're active. And one way is sometimes you don't see the fish, but if you see bait schools and they're all nicely clumped up together there aren't no fish feeding uh, down there but if they're kind of scattered and you can see the ball has got holes in it and stuff then there's active feeding fish in there and they're going through that school and busting them up and and scattering <laughs> yeah john that that would be pretty exciting for me anyhow Uh, I decided to put Rusty in ta time out again. He's 
too exciting, so we'll let them cool off for a little while. Yeah, it'd be fun. You have, you'd have to use the same rigs and throw it out there, and you know, one little small space. If you got a good eye and you're a good fisherman, uh, you can pick out where the where the fish are, and you know, ten feet away, there might not be nothing in there. But people rely on their depth finders so much that I find I pass up some good fishing by totally relying on it. I'll stop where I'm not marking any fish, but you throw 10, 15 feet out the side of the boat and, and they're there. Yeah, that, that's right. You, you have a drop weight, and uh, so it holds it on bottom, but the peg float will actually hold your bait a little bit up off the bottom. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Uh, so are right. you fishing for surface feeders? The bait is only four inches from the float. Now, uh, the float. <laughs> The float is there to just keep the bait off the bottom. They don't pay no mind that float. I better back somebody that door. Well, he's having a heck of a time this morning. He's just a busy man. Yeah, you know, there's a lot into, you know, throwing your line out. You know, I see people lose a lot of bites. You know, and, and that's a, that's a knack you, you, over time that you learn how your catch ratio goes way up. And uh, I think sometimes people that have a lot of fish, they don't concentrate on making every bite count. Oh, is that what they're called there? Now I know what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, those are pop-ups. We won't tell Rusty, though. Know, it's uh, We'll leave him in the dark. We learned something new, but we got to get the edge on him somewhere. John, he thinks pop-ups are still on the top of cans. <laughs> yeah, I remember as a kid one time taking a pop-top off a can and uh, putting it on the use it like a something flashy to use it for bait to see if I can catch any fish. I don't matter if I ever caught any or not. <laughs> yeah, that's what it does. Just keeps the bait a little bit off the bottom out of the mud and uh, debris that's right on the bottom. But most fish that they say are bottom feeders, most of those fish are not bottom feeders. They'll eat bait if they find it on the bottom, but when they're actively feed them, feeding, they're off the bottom. He's got, she's got to go party. <clears throat> Come on, Patches. You want to go? Are you, did you change your mind? Time for the dog to go outside. Good thing she loves the snow and the wind. She'll stand out there and stick her nose into the wind, and she comes back. She's just totally full of snow. And then she goes out and jumps through it like a wild thing and 
jumps up in the air and sticks her head right into the snow banks and digs and sticks her head down further. But from being a pup all winter, she doesn't know how to go to the bathroom except on snow. So I take her out to where some of the snow had melted and she pulls, she, want, she wants to go to the snow. I'm thinking, what are you going to do, dog, when you when the snow goes away? <laughs> so, John, where are you at today? You rolling, rolling, or honey doing it? <laughs> yeah, the Jack Russells, yeah. This one, I think, has almost as much uh, energy as a Jack Russell. It's really different from a lot of the dogs I've had. <laughs> dogs are hunting lizards. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? If they catch them and bring them back, you could always use them for bait. All right, casters, we'll be waiting for you. Maybe by then I'll take uh, Rusty out of timeout. Good morning, Yopper. You don't have to call me sir, though. I'm just a plain old person. I got to step over to the door and let the dog in. I'm sorry, Doc. I forgot to... Good girl. Spot. No, wrong spot. Hey, good girl. All right, dogs in, all full of snow. Got our treat. We're ready to roll now. <laughs> uh, Abby barking at somebody. Yeah, sometimes they get that barking and you don't know what they want. Imagine we sound the same when we're talking to them. Oh, well, thank you, Yopper. We all do that one way or the other. That's what makes this country great and keeps it rolling is everybody does their part from from trucking to eating. Of course, John does both. He trucks it and then he eats it. I'm waiting for him to come up to North Dakota in his truck and bring a whole truckload of seafood. Yeah, I like that orange cream, ice cream. You know, there's a truck that comes up from a couple different ones, and they'll bring up, it's supposed to be fresh seafood, but they start in Minot and then head back home and start, well, by the time they get back to Bismarck, they ain't got nothing left. 
and they uh, empty that them trucks right away. They come every quarter, I think. I've been trying to get some good crayfish for them, and they're always out. Because usually once a year, I like to make uh, crayfish utufay, and uh, it's a lot of work the way I do it, so I don't do it more than once a year. But the first time I made it, nobody would eat it. And when I warmed it up the next day, all of a sudden people started to try it, and man, all of a sudden it was gone. Once they once they tried it, they would. They said, oh, this is really good. Oh, check out that board he has back there. That's pretty, pretty slick. His paddle's got all kinds of stickers and his mounted fish. Yeah, that's one thing I've never did in my life is have a fish mounted. I wish I had. Yeah, tell us about crappie. I don't know. Kind of got out of practice. It's been 20 years since I actually fished a lot for crappie. And when I came back to North Dakota, I just wasn't that much and just kind of forgot about it. Yeah, that's what you, you know, if you want active feeding fish, John, that's exactly what you look for. And we have a lot of schmelt, and it's the same way. People get into these schools and, oh, I'm marking a lot of bait, a lot of bait. But if they're not getting busted up, there ain't nothing feeding on them, so it doesn't matter. But when those salmon are in there, boy, I tell you, you can, you can just about see where they swam right through those bait schools and and stuff and then you know you're in the good spot how far do you gotta travel to get your crappie I went on that fish brain and I started to really examine it last fall, I think. And I found a number of places that people put in their catch and they were catching crappie that are within driving distance, you know, short driving distance for me. And it's places I didn't really think about fishing that much. <clears throat> Four or five hours, that's a long haul. That's that's about what I have to go if I want to go get some, a lot of nice catfish. But that's in the Red River, but I wouldn't. If I go up there during the spawn, it'd be pretty good. But I think there's big ones here. I just got to figure out where they're at. Just need to put more time into it than I have the last two years. There you go. We have uh, our smallmouth bass are really, really good here, but it's not one of those species nobody targets, so it's hard to find get a good feel for how good it really is. So you think crappy is a funny name, huh? Yeah, everybody says, oh, you must be up north, you call it crappy, but <laughs> I'm about as north as you get, and it's always been crappy up here. Now, down in Virginia, they call them crappy. The real old-timers did. But 
But when you find a real good place to catch crappie, uh, they got it. Tell everybody they are crappie. That way you can save it for yourself. Hey, Mr. Super. Crappie, what's the name? What a name for a fish. I don't want to fish for crap. Yeah, that's all people call it crappie. I don't know why they call it crappie. The proper pronunciation of the name is crappie. Well, I got to go and get rid of some coffee. <laughs> Do what? Right. Yeah, he, he got the boat. He's gone. He's going to go do some crop fishing. He, his, uh, uh, somebody he fished with said they're biting like heck up there. So he come get the boat, take it out, and go fishing. I have heard them called specks. Yeah, some people call them crappie specks. Yep. Strawberry bass, never, but I've heard them call them, uh, uh, a lot of people call them white bass. A lot of people call them, uh, uh, stripers white bass. I've heard them called crappie called specks before. Who am I talking to? Rustic casters. What's up? You've been talking to Uncle Don. Don off. I see uh, John Order still up in here. Fresno was in here, John. I don't know where he went. I guess you scared him off. He found out you woke up. He was coming in. They're called specs there in Florida. Yep. A lot, I know in Florida they call them specs. Some of them call them specs, crappie. Around here, up up north from here in Missouri, northern Missouri, a lot of them call them white bass. They call the stripers or hybrids white bass. Uh, so uh, this the people call them different names for all over the place. It'll be out some part of the country. Okay. Well, look at this giant slab crappie I caught. Oh, that's a Pikachu. What? <laughs> Ain't no damn Pikachu. I don't know what the heck y'all talking about? But where I come from, the south, that's called crappie. Love them to get me some crappie, eat some. Oh, oh, oh right there, Mr. Juper. I agree with you right there. Oh, I call it dinner, too. <laughs> Come April, I'm going to be getting me some. I'm going to go up there and catch me some. There's a guy that loads cheese out of Wisconsin and makes his way to Alaska delivering cheese. And once in Alaska, he really, he reloads moose to bring back to the lower 48. Moose. Moose cheese or a moose moose? How do you reload a moose? Walk up behind him. <laughs> Lift your tail, buddy. I'm going to reload you back up here. You talking about moose meat? I don't know anywhere here. Not anywhere close around here that you can buy moose meat. If that's what you're talking about. I don't know. They must have moose farms up there because thank you you delivered moose meat all over the United States. There ain't enough moose up there wild, wild for that. Moose meat. Moose. There's a guy that loads cheese out of Wisconsin. Fish brain people give their spots out. Fish brain people give their spots out. You talking about the fish brain app or something like that? What are you talking about? Oh, uh, around here, uh, you don't have to give your spots out around here locally because if anybody's local, it's on YouTube, they can see where you fish. They know exactly where you're at. Yeah, John, that's it. Last year, last year was the first time I've messed around with that fish brain, and and it was kind of nice. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't I get the concept of it. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, 
didn't know how to work it or didn't know what to do or something like that. So I think I might use it just to mark where I go and what I caught there throughout the year. But it's it's got a lot of things to it. I have to play with it more. But it did show okay. me that people catch crappies other than uh, where I thought they would be or where I would fish for them. So. Yeah, so you can put, like, yesterday, if I had it yesterday, I could have put on there uh, about the excellent fish day, and it would show me the uh, the conditions and all that. Yeah, I'm not a real expert. I got to do a lot more plating with it. and But uh, people put their catches in there, and, and then it marks where the catch was. Hey, this YouTube's anger of the year. <coughs> if you don't believe me, he's got the picture to prove it. Look, at Uncle Don's got the shakes, the shaky shake. <laughs> uh, uh, it's like, uh, oh, he's moving. Let me uh, do this. Yep. Time to rest, uh, rest the county. Oh, now you ain't got the shaky shakes. Can you say something, John? <laughs> hey, we'll have to get a hold of that guy, John, on his way back. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta turn off the YouTube side. Yeah. Hey, NJ. Good morning, NJ. If I miss a base, can I read real slow and I get distracted? <laughs> that now, should do it. Can you hear me? Yeah. NJ, we don't call John Order Johnny Oils in here. That That's his stage name. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've heard John Lee really call a lot of different things. Yeah. Just don't oh, call God. me late for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't seen a good video like when you got your hair cut that time in a long time. Why? I'm about to for another one. <laughs> Just don't grow it out. Then you don't have to worry about somebody cutting it, huh? <laughs> yeah, cut one of my eyebrows to leave the other one up there. Pastor yeah. said, NJ, spit, how's spit going? Spit, <laughs> get you in the back. <laughs> hey, River Rat, we were talking about crappie fishing, man, but now that topic's done come and gone. So, uh, actually, we were talking about <coughs> a little bit of everything that you bet out. It started with Abby barking at somebody. Yeah, they, uh, the guy bought the, the guy sold the boat too, and I bought it back. He, uh, Come down, and he's gonna go crop and fish. Hey, that's, that's not normal for Abby to be barking like that. I think something was up. Yeah, for what what uh, what I paid him though, a good to help payment on that thing, man. Uh, uh, I think he's wanting to get it. Back. We kind of veered away from crappie fishing because I don't know much about crappie fishing and. And I timed Rusty out so he wasn't here. <laughs> NJ said, uh, I'm going to do a first fishing live stream next week. I'll make sure the first thing I do is spit. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing up your neck of the woods, NJ? I'm going to show y'all something right here. NJ, you sure you still want a piece of this <laughs> after that? <laughs> That's just a few of the 16 I caught yesterday. I did see that one.
River Rat dreaming of crop, going crappie fishing, says Mr. Uper. Yeah, let's go. Oh, he's all for that. Hey, it's getting close to that time, man. It's getting closer to them to spawn if that water won't keep warming up and we don't get any more cold, cold weather. As soon as that water hits between 60 and 63 degrees, the spawn's going to be on. That, that's that's a given. <laughs> he said, I don't want to. See, that be. <laughs> before they start to spawn, before they start to spawn, they'll be actively feeding real heavy prior to the spawn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you could fish them all through the spawn down there and, and come up here and they'd be pre spawn up here. <laughs> well, see, I, I, I like catching them when they're spawning, but and when they're feeding heavy, that's all right too. But I like it when they're making their beds because anything that floats into that bed, they're going to hit it and get rid of it because they want that bed right to track that uh, female in there. And so, uh, when they're, when they're making the their, their spawning beds, that's that's boy, well, that's that's when it's on fire. Yeah, that's the, uh, the male catfish do too. Yeah, the female they just come in, drop their eggs, and see ya. The male's got a sperm it or and, whatever you want to call it. And then and, they're gonna uh, pregnate it, and then they're gonna raise them till they're fried. And then the fries are out on the road and gone. Uh, down in Grenada, Mississippi, they always biting down there. Down there, you could be two or three days tearing them up, and or tearing them up one day, go out the next day, and you can't catch nothing. Down down in Grenada, Mississippi, it's always a gamble when you go down there to be. That's know, up there next to um, Skull Rush. Yeah, I know. Uh, my father used to go down there. We worked with Miranda. He was a buddy of his. They've stayed down there a week at a time on vacation trying to catch some of the big slabs. Never got a hit. Never caught a fish. Weather was bad, wind blowing a lot. And then uh, they went down there. Every year they'd make a trip down there. And one year they went down there for two days. They tore them up. The other three days they didn't catch nothing. They said they just quit biting. Ready, I, what's it? No. Oh. Hit the road. I had a long night last night, Rusty. Hey, Backlash. Backlash, you're on the wrong show, man. This is crappie, not bad. <laughs> Get him out of here. He's bad. From... <laughs> Ever since I've been on his show, man, I backlash you. Every day I go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, backlash. On his panel, we're pet fishing and that that uh, that PC fern, I backlashed that thing three times. I said, I ain't never backlashed that thing. <coughs> it's all fun, though. Every time I backlash, I think of backlash. So, yeah, I get impatient in a hurry once in a while and forget to adjust my yeah. tension on my spool. And, and afterwards, it's like, dang it, <coughs> what, it took two seconds to do it, but. Yeah, backlash. Backlash catch some good crappie. Yeah. Randall Rhino. What's going on, Randall? Hey, Randall. Good morning, Randall. I've seen backlash yeah. catch some crappie. Yeah. Soon the water, soon the river goes down because it's like 15 foot. Blood stays at 11. It's a 15 foot high yesterday. Yeah. And I know what happened. That river come over my fish out on that concrete pad. And then when it drops down, the fish can't get out because it's got a lower railing on the bottom. So they get trapped in there. They get trapped in there and then you just walk down there and pick them up. Huh. Last year, I'm going to pick up 30 crappie I've laid on that slab concrete. Huh. Uh, 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 uh. That, 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 uh, what you call it, hogging for crappie? What's it called? Hogging for crappie, reach down to the of water, pick them up. Well, they were they were out of water because the water drained, but they couldn't get through the railing. Oh, they came in. They came in on top of the railing when the water was above it. So when the water goes back down, the water goes through the railing and they're stuck in there. Yeah. 
if somebody don't pick them up and catch them, not too many people know about it. I mean, there's a few of people know about it. Some of the locals told me about it. I had checked it out, and it is sure enough. But if you don't get down there before they run out of water, it's a sea call to get them. Man, yesterday I was done fishing. I quit about 5 o'clock. <coughs> yeah. Made up to the van. I was talking to this little boy. He's a subscriber to my channel. He said, look at there. Looked up in the sky, and there was about 30 pelicans flying uh, north. I thought, man. Go back. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> what the They ain't coming <laughs> here yet. <laughs> and then they was just flying Good. straight down heading north. We, we can talk about bait fish, you know, how the catfish school up the bait fish and bust them up, Don. Well, the copy do the same thing. I learned it over this last year. The bait fish, they don't have a chance. They got they got the predators in the water, and then they got the predators flying above them out of the water. So they don't have a chance. They're doing But if you follow the birds, the birds like seagulls, if you follow the birds, they will lead you to the bait fish. And when you find your bait fish, they're going to find your other fish. Oh, that's yeah. why when I go up to Kentucky and I see all them uh, seagulls and pelicans are way out towards the middle. I know there's no skipjack up next to that bank. They're out there towards that middle, more turbulent water. And, yeah, uh, well, yeah, they're out there. You, them you out see out see that that water come out. On a real windy day, I, I, I watch for the birds on the shoreline running back and forth because I know that's where the bait fish are getting pushed into. Yep. Randall said, uh, sent us home from work for snow in the desert. Oh, my goodness. I hope you ain't going too far west, uh, John. We... We're in the middle of a, yesterday was a total whiteout around here, and today the wind is blowing and snow is drifting. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even get past uh, Missouri in the wintertime. He said, I'm thinking, uh, him and Coastal might go uh, saltwater fishing Saturday. Yeah, I might, I might go back over to the river Saturday, get another fishing trip in for the next week, start keeping an eye on the weather from Skipjack, so... Rustic, you sacrifice a lot of your crappie fishing time for catching those skippies, don't you? I did all last year because I, I had a uh, uh, hard time finding them. I mean, they just went up there in Kentucky, so it's three-hour drive over Pitwick, and you only allowed 100. So I spent most of my time trying to locate closer skipjack. So I didn't get the crappie fish none last year. Well, that's a good-looking icon I got up there. Look at that big old channel cat, though. Yeah, that's a nice one. That was kind of in November, November 1st. I got my winter attire on. I know, I know exactly where that one was caught at. So what do you guys think of my thing that Rusty made for me? He, I tell you what, he's very creative with what he does on that edited Great, great stuff. Yeah, I was surprised when he sent it to me. It was like, wow, that was really nice of him to do. Uh, so I use it on my Sunday morning shows. Oh, you finally got it loaded up. That's awesome. No, I used it a couple, a couple Sundays already. <coughs> I'd see the last Sunday. I was driving. I couldn't type, but I worked last Sunday. Rustic, if the river goes down by this weekend, if I get home, I'm going to get home. But if the river goes down, I'm going to try some crappie fishing. Yeah. I'd love to be able to go crop fishing. So this year, I, whether I get skipjack or not, I'm going to at least take one week to go. And because uh, I've got to get me some of my deep freeze because we eat a lot of fish during the wintertime. And now we, yeah. uh, we just ain't got it. In the deep freeze, because what we did have was too old. Because once your once your crappie turns, it's you got it in ice water, and you got to block the ice frozen. And you turn it, you see it's yellow. Throw it away. If it's not white anymore, don't eat it. Yeah, with Lent coming on, that's when we eat a big share of our fish up. 
I didn't have much left from last year. I guess if so, they were wrapped up in the, you know, some tournaments I'd like for catfishing, and you really forget about other fish. And that when I was growing up, we fished for everything. Uh, Caster said, come on, buddy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, Caster. Hey, man, Mr. Juper up there, he's still ice fishing. Well, thank you for your service, Don. I've been to tell you that a long time. Oh, well, thank you. One of these days, we're going to have to talk about what's going on in the country right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Uh, Kind of crazy right now. What's going on in the world? Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to feel better now. I wish I hadn't given up my CDL. <laughs> 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 I was feeling so bad for so long that when my license came due, I went down to renew it, and I didn't have the paperwork to renew the CDL. And and I was thinking, you know, at my age, I have no business. So. Uh, doing it and the easiest way to keep me from getting back and doing it here and there uh, was to just give it up. Let it go, yeah. But I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> but I ain't going to go through. I don't have the trucks anymore to go through and take the test and everything, but pretty easy here. Right. They're making, they're making it easy now. Uh, yeah, somebody was talking last night that they had to go through like a six-week school and it cost them a couple thousand dollars and to jump through all five or six thousand out of here through that school. Yeah. It used to be here in Missouri, you was grandfathered in if you worked for a company and you moved trucks around in the, in the lot. But uh, now you have to, you can go get your CDLs, but most places won't hire you unless you went to that college deal to get at least some kind of lesson. You know why that is, right? Because if you don't, you'll go up like a Swift driver. <laughs> it's all about the insurance company. The insurance company controls this world. Everything you go through has got to be something to do with the insurance company. The car yeah. insurance, the house insurance. Property insurance, health insurance, all that good insurance. Yeah, it's amazing how some of these big companies got their thumb on the wheel and dictate everything that's happening, and it's usually not for your best interest. Uh, just like that trade around that you have in Ohio. You know, some of the biggest owners in that company, when when the big bank, bank bankers. J.P. Morgan. Uh, they own the party home. There's other bankers, too. But I get them involved. So, Gig, what are you up to this week? Oh, me? No, Gig. Gig? Ability. I don't even want to drive the grocery store here, let alone halfway across. <laughs> no, uh, uh, he likes hanging out in the Walmart parking lot, <laughs> waiting in the vehicle. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really drive that far, but I drive back and forth to the same spot a lot because I'm hauling titanium. So I'll take I'll bring titanium in, then I'll take titanium back out somewhere. Then I'll bring another one back in and another one back out. But it's usually 200 miles out one way. That, that's like 187, I think, last night. Daughter follows oversized loads up and down eastern seaboard. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can get a lot of oversized. I bring a lot. It's coming up right now. We don't see Probably a different agent. That one, that big bridge project. It wasn't that rustic. Probably in Mississippi. About three weeks ago, probably two, three weeks ago. The what? 
But I went to Mississippi that big oversized that bridge. Oh. Um, that was 14 and a half foot wide. Where's yet? Uh, uh, no, it wouldn't be the Dyersburg Bridge because that puts you in Arkansas. That'd be the opposite side of the river for you. Uh, hello, what, what's next? To the <laughs> That's what I went down to that big old job site down in Mississippi to that bridge down there on that lake. I have no idea. <laughs> I've slept since then. Gig, do you go out quite a ways to do your shrimping, or three, how you, or how do you do that? Wrestling for I have to go shrimping tonight. When I was in Puget Sound, we just used shrimp pots and put them out and and. Uh, let them soak and then go back and pull them. And but there's so many rules and regulations and different times and everything. <coughs> the most fun I had was during shrimping season. Is they have a cutoff time like three o'clock, say. Well, all these boats are heading back to the same couple boat ramps to, and everybody wants to beat everybody there. And it, it gets crazy at the boat last some of the stupid things people do. Yeah. Seen, seen one guy yeah. sink his boat because he tried to get ahead of everybody and tied his boat off and the current swung it around and the, all the wakes coming in was raising it up and dropping it, raising it up, and it dropped it right out of a rock and knocked about a 12-inch hole in the bottom boat. So. Now nobody could get in because they have a boat sunk on the boat rock until they got a tow truck to pull it out. <laughs> but I, I've seen, I've had some good chuckles just sitting there watching. You can tell when they come in, you are in big trouble if you're going to do this, but they'll, they try anything. A lot of people that go shrimping, that's about the only time of year other than pleasure boating that they actually get out on the water and do something like that. And they're not the most experienced at coming in with a I side. Mean, <laughs> most of that down south, but I live in Louisiana. And out there, and, uh, we catch our shrimp for the Cast that thought out there catching just like you want to bait fish. That's what the kids are shrimp with for bait. Thought out there cast net them. Huh. So they can get tangled up. They can get tangled up in the net so they can't get out. Yeah. Now those ones we used to catch at Puget Sound were pretty big shrimp. Yeah, these were big shrimp too. Some of them were like huge. They're like, good God. But you get so many uh, per person that you can keep. So they try to load these boats up with a bunch of kids or people and so they can get more. Yeah. Now they got these, uh, I don't know, I can't remember what they're called now, but they got these specific areas down there that. Huh. They, it's a shrimp breeding ground, basically. I'll have to do yeah, that. Copy that. But it's like a ship, uh, shrimp breeding ground. And you're not allowed to take those shrimp out of there. That's like protected for them. They're safe mm -hmm. haven. Yeah, I'm working on a couple slideshows to put up on my. Ah, uh, oh, there you go. I got got the wife blocked out. <laughs> I'm trying to go through years of photos, and 
I never took very many pictures of the fish we caught or anything like that. And try and put them all together and put them in a little slideshow. Yep. But I'm terrible at doing stuff like that anymore. You and me both, Tom. I can't do it. I can, but I can take a picture. Yeah. But put, put more than one picture together on a slideshow, I'm lost. Yeah. But I need to because I got a DVD that I want to make. I got to figure out how to do it. I guess I'm going to burn them on the laptop. Yeah, I'm trying to remember that a lot of this I'm doing is for the great grandkids and grandkids that can go and look remember? at it. Your time. Yeah, I got to look back through some of my older pictures back before self, I believe, and thought of. They, they had the disposable, well, you've got some Polaroid pictures, but the disposable <laughs> cameras are about 35 millimeters. Yeah. I got tons of pictures, but I don't know how I could even put them on a, put them on a CD. Yeah, I took and I had about, oh, I don't know how many. Slides. I used to always shoot slides when I was doing 35 millimeter and took them down and had them all put on uh, CD for me. And because the slides are, aren't going to last forever, but they're doing pretty good. Had some old eight yeah. millimeter film that I had them do. And after I had them do them all, got home, found a bunch more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot of pictures uh, back in the early 80s. Uh, you know, I was... You were in, in uh, diapers then, weren't you? No, <laughs> I was 12. I was about 12, 13 years old. But when I really started hunting, you know, hunting and fishing, really not heavy. Diapers. <laughs> Josh, help me, John. You, you hear that, Rustic? He called him. We were the diaper in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look. Thank God you found me. I yep. can't see much of, the, much of the phone because of the glare of the sunlight. It's uh, from Mrs. Rustic. <laughs> from Mrs. Rustic? Yeah, I said, uh, I see why you didn't answer. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> Is she on there? The chat? Yeah, maybe because I was uh, at that time. I was in the uh, kitchen getting me a soda. <laughs> hey, there's the puppy. My little. Hey, uh, this is rustic. My dog. <laughs> yeah, she's. Growing like a weed, and the last couple of days, her, her temperament seems to really have improved, but we have to work hard with her. She wants to go to that puppy mode where she gets so excited she didn't know whether she's come or going. And yeah. Usually real good in the morning. <laughs> but... And then I take that time to I touch her all over, her paws, her ears, and everything. And then when I take her into the vet or something, they, they always comment that it was so easy to do things with them because they're used to being touched. And, right. And, well, I'll tell you what, my dogs, I had to cut their nails the other day. Man, that was like the craziest thing I ever seen. Mm. They don't like to get their nails cut. Oh, no, no, no. They sure don't. John said, watch it. <laughs> he was parked for the night. Grabbed the clippers, and he started going towards him. Dog, and I was like. Oh, yeah, the, other, the other day was the first time that she fussed with me about her nails. But normally, she's pretty good. Actually, I got to make a, a harness where I can hang them up in the, from the body. Yeah. And the. That way they can't pull their feet away from you. Yeah. So yeah. Hanging, I got to hang them up in a harness 
Then I took the the little battery operated grinder for them, grinder mm -hmm. nail down. Yeah, I but clipped. I can't them. hang them up in here. Yeah, I clipped them, and then it was like, God, the edges <laughs> where you clip them are just as sharp as as anything. So I had to oh, get grinders yeah. and. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. But two weeks ago, she'd never sit like this. She was too high strung to do that. But I try to brush her every day, and she's going to be my crappie dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. But she's tired already. She gets up at 5.30 every morning, goes to bed at 8 o'clock, almost, almost could tell your time by her habits. And the 8 o'clock I'm good with, but the 5.30 I'm not so good with. Good morning, Jody. Hey, morning, Jody. I hope you're feeling better. Said hello, Roosty, Don, and John. <laughs> oh, yeah, congratulations. Female angler of the year. She couldn't Boy. get uh, accept her speech because I think she's got laryngitis. Uh, but uh, well, John's gone, ain't he? He's pooped. Yeah, Jody just threw him right out of, out of the channel. Yeah, <laughs> he pooped him out, kicked him in the in the biscuit. Yeah, congratulations on a uh, female angler of the year. Yeah, I was I was happy for her, but not all the awards did I get excited about. But there was there was a few, and she was one that I was just as happy for her as she was. <laughs> yeah, I knew she was going to win that one hands down. Yeah. Well, some people really deserve it, but some of them I didn't even know who they were, so it was kind of hard to get excited about it. She's not, she still ain't feeling better. They sent her home for work. Yes. She got a couple of shots the other day. I didn't, I didn't know if they still give penicillin shots in the right cheek or not. Forgot to ask her. <laughs> I know she couldn't talk because uh, I think she had laryngitis or a real bad sore throat, but uh, yeah. I seen her go up there and get her award and stuff like that. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, Paulette walked by and and said, "Oh, poor Jody. She she looks like she's feeling pretty miserable." I said, "She is." Yeah, hey, good morning, brother Matt. What's up, Big Matt? <laughs> good morning. So, were you faking it, Jody, so that you they would send you home and you could go fishing? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Because if she got that award, it's her throat was better. She would have yeah. thanked everybody, nominated her, stuff like that, and they'd have to yank the mic out of her hand because she would quit talking. <laughs> Jody's a talkaholic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she earned every bit of that award, though. Yes, yeah, she did. It, take, it takes a lot of. Oh, Marcia, she can't. time and energy to do what she does. I have a hard time keeping up when I'm just uh, watching all the stuff, much less participating. <laughs> My goal is maybe this summer I'll get a chance to. I know on. They, uh, the fish were biting so good, man, that uh, I was like, I, I, I didn't get. They didn't cut me no slack there for a while. I was pouring sweat. And I'm like, man. I, said, oh, I, got, I, I mean, I, I've got one part of the video there where I'm actually a fish hit and I'm standing there watching it and I start really cranking on it. And as I'm reeling that fish in, I never noticed that mad cat's on the end down there. And get, I mean, it got slammed and it was pulled down. And by the time I looked over there, it was, it was back up. I didn't see it moved, and I was messing around doing something else, and it started going down again. 
I never even noticed it until after I sat down. Because uh, that's the one I broke my pole and I sat down and I was messing with it. And I just had to look up there and see the line was slagged and going across the, the other line. I was like, well, what, what's going on right here, man? Another wind ain't blowing. I was reeling, reeling forever. And finally, whoa. So he's on there. And Joker was trying to head up river. <laughs> hey, Steph. Oh, she's got pneumonia. I started to go live yesterday because I was having, man, it was an epic fish day right there, boy. Uh, nice blues. And, uh, and then I got thinking, nah, I, need, I need to get some video footage, so I just keep rolling video. Because I wind up, like I said, I wind up catching 16 yesterday. And uh, the biggest one was 25.5, the 24. Then I had some 20s, 22s, 13s, 19s, a 5, a 9. And they they mostly ranged at 12. And they mostly ranged between uh, 13 to 20. Most of them did. So I had an epic day, man. Top new PB. Ah. Yeah, she's got pneumonia. I hope she don't have to go in the hospital. <laughs> this is Uncle Don. I thought he froze up for a minute. He just held his hand up away from the doctor. <laughs> no, I was I was reading the note from Jody. I'm, I'm not slow. That's all right, Jody. Well, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, Pooch wants outside, so. I'm going to step over to the door and let her out. Hey, there's Apache. He says, been on lunch break. Been listening the whole time. Uncle Don's been speaking. Did you learn anything, buddy? <laughs> I caught pneumonia and COVID. That's a bad combination right there, man. And look at that. He just just disappears in, in the background back here. Oh, River Rat says uh, he has surgery in the morning. Last one. Awesome, awesome. Well, I hope everything uh, goes well and you heal up quickly. Oh, Jody heals up. Yeah, see, that pneumonia ain't nothing to play with, man. Hey, 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 it's cold out there. What in the world is that thing? He's got those stuff. Well, I think the storm is wrapping up. And wind's starting to go down a little bit. And my show will start at 9 Friday so people can still... I don't watch two stands anyway, so start at 8, 7. We feel like it. <laughs> anyway, Jody, you just take care and, and get your health back. You're like me. I got to get my health back before the fishing gets real good because then ain't gonna have time to mess with it. <laughs> and maybe this summer I'll come up on one of your Friday nights and uh, might not be competitive, but I'll have a good time. If Jody allows it, I'd like to come up and do some of that flathead challenge this summer. <laughs> Maybe a night or two on her on her life. You have to be able to catch a fish, Rusty. Yeah. <laughs> I caught sixteen yesterday. <laughs> but one day I got sixteen days of mm -hmm. uh, room to run right there because I counted one at a time. One day. Got your clicker going. <laughs> hey, you you talked me into buying one last year, but I think I ended up with four fish on it. <laughs> I kept forgetting. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, I got that one video dropped though where I'm not even paying attention to that other rod and it's getting pounded. <laughs> yeah, I watched a couple of them. I know I watched the uh, one where you were had the uh, like slideshow of your fish. Yeah, I seen that one. Yeah, that was just some of my caught. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to make it too long because I think I, I won't really make it a short. I think I made it a short. Uh, Every time I want to, awesome because uh, I like to, I like to try the little flathead fishing. I don't do much of that at all. If I catch one, I get lucky. But I like to try some of that because yeah. <laughs> Mr. Huber. You said if John caught 16, he would have to take his boots off to keep count. <laughs> like I said, I caught 16 yesterday. My smallest was five. And then my largest was 25.5. So I got starting off the year this pretty good with some blues. Got my new TV. Uh, I still got the whole year to try to break it. So last year I broke my PB like the three times. <laughs> so y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't count me out now. I mean, I don't fish a whole lot. I get skunked a lot, but when I when I'm on them, I'm on them. <laughs> I get skunked a lot. <laughs> no. I'd I always manage to catch something. But. I don't get to go catfishing a lot because, you know, I have a, a lot of other things I got to do. Uh, and a lot of uh, some major responsibilities like my mother-in-law, I got to take care of her place, uh, check her mail, make sure she's all right, check in on her and, and go run errands for her and stuff because she can't do it anymore. And then I got my grandkids. We help my daughter out a lot because my oldest granddaughter plays uh, softball. Now she's on a traveling all-star softball team she's a pitcher and a catcher but she loves to pitch it's good at it and uh so they recruit her so we usually have to sit with the grand the, the youngest granddaughter and the grand, my grandson while they go do that so that's a lot of doing that but i got yards to mow through the summer i got skipjack to catch and so i don't get to catfish a whole lot like i want to but when i go i try to make a count every time yeah, my great grandkids are in. My youngest grandkids are getting to the age where it won't be no problem because they're getting to the age to be able to go fishing with me. And I still remember back when I was about ten years old going with my grandfather. I can't hardly move my shoulders. <laughs> this is sore. Yeah, ain't that like all fishing? Yeah. Salmon fishing. Oh, let me see. Here. yesterday from fighting them fish. And them fish were, some of them just hit, they just lay there. They wouldn't do nothing. They didn't know they was on there. And then some of them, man, they just, they just literally went to pole. I mean, it's like they were gone. Hey, Apache said, crappie fishing this Saturday. Hopefully, if no rain and wind calms down. Yeah, that's the main thing right now. Right now, the wind is blowing outside. Yesterday, dead calm. Perfect, man. Today, the wind is blowing, and it's going to get harder. Saturday's supposed to be a pretty decent day. Uh, well, I can't remember if Saturday or Sunday, the wind gust is supposed to be like 27 or 30. I can't remember which day it is. But uh, I think I'm going to go fishing Saturday. If not, it'll be Sunday. You know, when it's windy, it's, uh, for me, it's better fishing. But, man, I hate fishing in the wind. It's, it just, you know, from everything you do is a challenge. Well, you, you can catch fish in the wind. And uh, if you just tuck it out, you can catch fish in the wind. But, but I, I can't stand the there and and just have that hard wind blowing on me all the time. I, I just can't do it. That's what I mean. Everything blowing away. And 
it's hard to see your poles because the wind's whipping them and and I always fit into the wind, so every time you throw it out, it's uh, blows it one way or the other. And, but I usually have good luck. Hey, bank fishing adventures. Welcome in, buddy. Uh, Apache, if you're going to uh, go fish Saturday for some crappie, you're going to try to shoot some video footage of it, get it posted. Sir Rick. Adventures. Good morning. Sir Rick. <laughs> it's just rustic, buddy. <laughs> and you call me rustic, call me David. <laughs> yeah, I was going to try to go live. Oh, that'd be awesome. If I fish a Saturday, I'll miss it, but I'd hate to do that. But uh, right now, I got to. This is going to be my last. Probably, I won't say my last catfishing trip, but because if the skipjack are running pretty good right now, I can go up here and catch uh, 30, 40 of them uh, before they get in there real thick. I'll be doing a skipjack fishing thing, but if not, I'll, I'll probably go catfishing again. But I've got to get up there and next week for sure and test the waters and see what they're doing. And I am also going to be trying what Jody suggested. Uh, And that's to uh, take a couple of jigs, two or three jigs, throw something like that spook out there and let it float on top. Just let it float out there and see if they hit that jig. Because anytime that's moving in that current, they might have hit it. I mean, I have done that with a with a cigar float with a couple of jigs. I never had to look because I imagine I probably didn't have it deep enough or I had it too deep. But. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to invest in a 12-foot spinning rod. I got one spot that, from where I can fish, I thought I could make it out there, but I can't make it about halfway with the poles I got. So I'm hoping to get one. And if I can drop my line right in this one hole, I think it's going to be a good producer. But... Yeah, I wound up with my Uncle Lou's rod and four or six ounces of weight, and I whipped that sucker as hard as I could, and I thought, oh, man, I'm going to make it. And by the time it dropped, I was only maybe halfway. <laughs> yeah. Well, you uh, so, <laughs> I'll, 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 blah, blah, blah. between three to 5,000 skipjack a year, uh, this year, since they were so bad last year, I've got to double that. So I hope I get on them because if I have to drive three hours to Pitwick Dam over Tennessee for 100 fish, I'm staying two days and I'm bringing back 200 fish. I'm not going over for 100. I'll have to stay overnight and just try to catch it because I think you're allowed 200 in possession, but 100 a day. So if I catch 100, throw them in a cooler. I'm done to the next day, and I can just relax, go eat or whatever, and come back and just chill out, spend the night, get up next day and fill that other one up with 100, and that way I have 100 in both of them, and then I'll, I'll be legal. But Well, just think, if I came down and helped you, we could do twice that. Yeah. Of course, but, I'd have to be able to catch one first. <laughs> I like fishing over Kentucky because I can get 500 a day over there. Do you use uh, what weight rod do you use for that? I have one that's my $9 rod. It's a heavy. And then I have a Fluger medium heavy. Seven foot casting rods. Yeah. But I use the heavy one mostly because I can take the other one, when you go to flop the jigs, it does this. It bends the pole around a little bit and don't give it that right touch. Uh, but that heavy does this, and it'll make that jig go up and do that. And that's how uh, I get my crappie. I mean, most of my skipjack. So I use that heavy rod more than I do that medium heavy. That's, that's why I like a fast tip on my poles. It seems like you... 
whatever you get on your line seems like it reacts better with that fast tip than it does a moderate tip. Yeah, that that's why I like the heavy for that heavy current because it don't it don't make that pole bend around, you know, like this right here. And that fast right. mainly stays straight. And you can make you can pop that jig better. If that pole's been around already, you try to pull a jig, you just pull it around a little further, a little harder, you know, and it makes the pole mm -hmm. bend a little more. So I try to use that the heavy uh rod more than anything. Now my other one now, I like using it when I'm throwing a uh, a foley spoon. And I like using it when I go to uh, Pickwick because it seems to, I don't know what it is about them waters, but that pole on that makes the jigs do some uh, dance more and, and just produces more than my head. <clears throat> if I I've, pull, seen, I've seen people in Kentucky have tried to use their catfish rig poles to fish skipjack. They'll catch skipjack, but they won't catch me as they normally will. Then they got to hold that heavy pole up, do all that casting, reel and casting, reel. I'm like, yeah. It's yeah I, <laughs> I have a St. Croix Mobile Joe pole that's, uh, I think it's a heavy, but it's a really light pole. And it works good for that. It's a Mojo Bass pole, but it, yeah. it works real good with that because of the lightness, like you said. Uh, Uncle Lewis would wear me out <laughs> doing that all day long. Yeah, I, I, you won't catch me using a uh, catfish pole for a, trying to catch skipjack. That's just, you. even though they're in there and they're hitting, you still want some kind of finesse on her, especially if you're doing a seven rig setup like I am. Mm -hmm. You know, because you want the rigs to come up there like this to mimic, you know, bait fish moving in the current. And whenever you pull on it and it starts to fall, that's when they come up there and try to grab it. If I'm using more of a surface crankbait, I like the little bit mo modern tip on it because when it pulls, it flexes enough. It doesn't pull the lip out of the water and make it skip on top. It does it a little bit slower. Yeah. Look at that YouTube Angler of the Year still here. Yoper, you have a good day, sir. He jumps up off the screen, but he's still in chat. <laughs> yeah, I love love catching up skipjack, but man, it's you got uh Actually, I have to buy my uh, commercial license this week. Just drop it there. She spends a lot of time. I just brought her in. Oh, maybe she's being a pain. Got a state ID number from the state. I pay taxes into the state. Uh, then I got to uh, renew my commercial license for Missouri. They just got two loads booked. Hey, are you going to load out in New York uh, before you head back? So when you got a dead head back, just to get your load. I don't know where Fresno's at. He should be in here. I don't like making fun of nobody behind the back. <laughs> <laughs> He talked to smack to me yesterday uh, when I caught the fish, telling me that uh, that I caught the fish because I learned a lot from watching his videos. <laughs> hey, there's Jody. Hey, Jody, you got to get Jack too now. She's on the verge of becoming that skipjack queen. She she catches the far end of some skipjack now. We'll have to start calling her Wild Woman of the Lake. She just tears them up. Oh, yeah. Uh, plus, up there where she's at, the skipjacks run good up there. We're down here this far down. And for some reason, they just have not. 
I don't know if it's because if our water was lower or what, but uh, it's just not. They just wasn't there this year. I mean, and plus, I can go, like I said, to Pickwick and catch them. But, man, that's a three-hour drive one way. And, and like, I did that for a month straight, and it, I got tired of that drive. I was like, my goodness. Deliver to Toronto. Reload, same place, take it 60 miles, unload, reload back to Toronto. Hey, at least you keep it going, go for it. Yeah, that's what I liked when I was trucking in the oil fields. It was <clears throat> usually only a couple hours at the most one way. And, yeah. you know, I was stopping and going and loading. So it wasn't real long, you know, constant on the road. But, the bad thing was, is always get so dirty and muddy. <laughs> yeah, air drop. <laughs> Funny job. Time you drive three hours, you're standing on your feet for like six, seven hours and catching out about 5,000 times. Uh, pulling in fish, not catching fish, pulling in fish. And you're on your feet the whole time. And then you go to start driving home about halfway home. You're like, yes. <laughs> Sometimes I always drove at night because at night I never get drowsy. Afternoons I have a terrible time. I'm not drowsy. Here at uh, let's see, three, four, five, six. I left here at two o'clock in the morning to get there by five. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, get there by at least five. And I have left here at one o'clock to get there by four. Uh, because I'll sit there in the dark watching that water. And whenever you start seeing that water move in the dark, that's when you want to start throwing because that water will be calm right there. And as soon as that water starts popping a little bit, you start throwing and catch them before daylight. And then you'll have a, a, a good solid hour of catching them. And then all of a sudden it'll be dead until, until the daylight gets up. Then it'll start hitting again. But uh, that three hour drive, where are you out? Six hour round trip. Plus, you stay on your beat, cast, and fishing all day. I think it was while you were gone, Rusty. I said I got my power source in yesterday. I'm pretty excited about it. Cool. Yeah, but I had left at 2 o'clock in the morning and came home well after dark. <laughs> well, when I get over early enough, I try to get my quarter before it's about dinner at 1 o'clock so I can cut out. <laughs> Let's see what you got there, buddy. Let's see if I can get it up there. It's about 20 pounds. Yeah. Uh, I guess that ain't gonna. There Jack it is. Yep, Jackery. Yeah, I got tired of night before I go out and do a live to try to get all my batteries charged and everything, all my cords lined up and and everything, so I figured, well, I'm just gonna try to do it all in one. How much and, you left? Pardon? How much you get left? That well, wasn't cheap, but it pretty much uh, it'll run my lights and phones and cameras and everything for a few days. Yeah, but, that's good. Uh... I plug my heater into it, and it actually will run my heater. Yeah, you need to, if you got uh, lights that you run, like, say, for nighttime, like a compact light. Yeah. You need to put one of those on there, let it set on there, see how long it goes on the brightest setting, and see how long it goes before it starts dying down. Because uh, I need to find something like that for nighttime time. Well, if I got it figured out right, it should run in about four or five days. <laughs> oh, and, and uh, that, that's compact on the brightest setting, and then put a box fan on it that way at the same time. Exactly, I can take a box fan out there and keep the skeeters off of me. Yeah, I never thought of that. But I want to put it on the boat, and then I can charge it with solar panels, and I can put them on the top of the T-top. and. Oh, no. So it'll be charging while I'm using it. So I shouldn't have to worry much about uh, getting all my different batteries charged. Yeah. 
in my chair that Paul had bought me last year. It don't last long on those small batteries. I gotta let the dog out. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, they, need, they need to do some testing on that dude and uh it was on it testing it out. I start the video up, hook, hooking a fan up to it, box fan. I take the light and turn them on, just let them run on the field. And then go to the video run for like a minute and then uh feel down and then, uh, come a few hours later and check on it. It's still running bright. Yeah, I, I plan to do that. Uh I, I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, I was looking at them for a number of years already, and and they had a special, and so I got 250 off. So I thought, well, I could wait for it to go down in price, but how long do you wait before you pull the trigger? You know? Yeah. Because I'd like to know if it brought two complex slots. Yeah. I don't know that. Uh, run my lawnmower battery on the complex lot, but man, it seems like even though it's fully charged, after about six hours, it starts getting to dim. Yeah, one of these little batteries I bought for ice fishing, it'll run my complex light for about 24 hours. Hey, Shorty. Good morning, Shorty. Yeah, but I want mine to lit up like Yankee Stable or something. I'm out fishing. I want it lit up. I want to open run two complex lots. Yeah, it's funny. I, I my mind is going. Okay, now I got this, and I keep coming up with, oh, I could do this now, or I could do that now, and like you said, the fan and and the only thing I need to find, and I have never seen it, is a USB extension. You know, they make the long cords for your phones and stuff. But I've never seen one where you actually like an extension cord. So every time you change, you know, for your phone and your camera and everything, you have to buy separate cords. To And the longest I found was like, I think, 20 feet, which is fine, but then you have to carry that many different cords. It'd be nice to have just an extension where you can just switch and match when you get set up and you can put your lights a little bit further away and yeah. and still be able to reach it. But I guess with this one, I could take a, just a regular extension cord and plug it in and put the adapter on the end for the USB and do it that way too. Shorty, yep, we got Shorty's adventure. She's a huge channel support. Got an awesome channel. Just cute little button. Cute little button, man. Real friendly. Nice, nice person. Rustic, you're kind of getting in a, a fish tank talking. Getting a little bit garbled every once in a while. Garble, 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 garble. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> The truck stop might have one. My wife gave me a hard time. I said, uh, she said, if you quit buying this fishing stuff, you could save up the money to get your teeth fixed. And I told her, well, my teeth don't feed me. It just helps me eat. <laughs> i got to have something to eat. <laughs> I am doing good, Shorty. Uh, you check out my shorts. So see, which I caught this on shorty. Got some good fish yesterday. I'm hoping for a repeat set or something. We tip it it's going down now. It's not clear up. So. But don't know me, I'm actually the deco monster, so that's where I'm gonna be at. And I was moving up doing pretty good at 25 pounder. And I thought for sure I was gonna wind up with 30 or better. But time ran out for me, so I had to cool. 
They were still biting too, because I done reeled in two poles, put everything up, standing there walking up to the to the public camp, and I had to look up, and uh, it started bouncing a couple times, pulled a couple times, and uh, but I think it was a little channel cat trying to hit it because I had a half a half a big shad on there, and if I put the whole shad on it, the whole shad seemed to do better. Did you see that uh, clip Catfish Terry put up? Uh -huh. He uh, he was out going to go fishing, and there was a boating accident. And a guy got out in the lake, evidently didn't know it real well, got in his bass boat, and went screaming up the lake, and I guess he hit a stump. And it tore his 250 horsepower motor off, and it ended up in the driver's seat with him. And so he's he's in pretty bad shape, I guess. But so there was people trying to go out and tow the boat back in and get the took the EMTs out to stay, help stabilize them, and then they lifted them to the hospital. But I just I always tell my kids and people, you know, you gotta be safe out there. Even if you know it, it changes. Oh yeah. You know, somewhere you've been buzzing across there for years and all of a sudden the water level drops and now there's something out there that's gonna grab you. And especially in the river around here, those sandbars change weekly. Well here's not the sandbars you have to worry too much about. Is if you go across the river on a good pretty day or whatever, and you see like a flat round circle type of water, right? It's that's that's a severe undertow, it's something and it's causing suction. Mm -hmm. So when you're going across there, you're going around and you go, you'll hit one, and you know, and it, it will pull a little bit. And, and you have to really watch because you never know when a big tree wad. Root rods will pop up out of the water and then, yep. and then go back down. And I've seen them big enough where if there was a boat going that would come there, it would, hit, it would just pull it boat up. Yeah, those deadheads that are just under the surface, it, which is nice if it's a little bit a wind because sometimes you can see them in the wave yeah, but, yeah. or in a wake, but those are. You just got to be careful. And I used to be able to read the water real good, and then I kind of, last few years, I think it's the lack of time I've spent out there that I have to, like, relearn it, reread it. And sometimes I think I, you get spoiled uh with uh, using depth finders, but people forget that only shows you after it's too late. <laughs> I don't think I have depth finder. I put really pretty good. Got it. I use it for the maps, and when I'm in real shallow water, to kind of keep track. But years ago, they had one. And I was going to get one and never did, but uh, it shined out to 800 feet in front of you, and yeah, the cone yeah. was up and down, so you could actually see shallow stuff coming coming up to you. And then they had another one with a cone that went sideways that far in front, so you could actually look out in front and. And I thought that was a good concept. They kind of died away, and I've never seen anything like it since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look at that. Back here, up here, up here. Uh, on your, on your, on your, on your, on your. Shorty said, she is there listening while cooking. What are you cooking, Shorty? Oh, the dog can you hear me? Yeah. I'm getting a bad back feed off your live, off your side of where. 
kind of a whining noise? No, I can hear myself talking over there. Not now, but it was. Oh, so, I, I wonder what that was. I don't know. I, I can be sitting here talking, and, uh, and I can hear myself come through yours. Cooking that beef. What kind of beef? Hamburger beef? Steak beef? T-bones? I had a chunk of beef last night that was marked stir-fry, so we made up a stir-fry with it. And boy, I tell you, that stuff was so tender. And I don't know where I got it or Good. what it actually was. J-Dog's back in the house. Good morning, doggy. You missed a lot, J-Dog. You missed a lot, man. Josh said, Jay Dog, how are you, bud? Shorty, what kind of beef you cooking? Jay Dog, Shorty's cooking dinner. Jay Dog, all I can say is you missed everything from when you left till now. <laughs> yeah, we talk about everything. As you said, Mark caught up. Oh, beef steak. What do you have for side dishes? Black eyed peas, green beans, corn, and mashed potatoes, or baked potatoes. I seen that when Mark was fishing. I was on, uh, I was in J Dog's live and uh, seen him, seen him fishing. Boy, J Dog's being polite today, calling John Mister Oiler. <laughs> uh, Rustic, I just sent you a picture of the new and improved dog pound. Hey, did uh, he come get that other one? Let me see. Good morning, Connor. Sun Tracker. That's pretty cool, man. Can you hear me? Oh, Don, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Connor. Yeah, that's pretty cool, Jay Dog. Now you got to get your, uh, your pole holder stuff on there. <clears throat> that's the fun part is... Uh, Doing the little things. Yeah, you know, boy, I sold that. I sold a book. So to me, and I buy it from him. He, uh, he come got it a while ago. Says he's gonna take a crop fishing. Then he gonna bring it back. He says he's gonna leave it at his house till I come up here and get it. Yeah, Rusty, you gave me a great idea today. Well, that always gets so hot when it's warm out on the boat. Now I'll be able to hook up a nice fan and blow it on her, and, and she'll maybe forgive me for buying this power station. <laughs> you ain't tell me how much it costs me. <laughs> either that or uh, either that or me or Facebook message me what it, uh, where I can go look it up. Yeah, they have all different sizes. They're all different prices, but. You know, they sell the Jackery now at Harbor Freight. Well, send, uh, send me a message on Facebook. Tell me where I can go look it up. Okay. Uh, they don't. <laughs> yeah, she flying out here the other day. And, and did you buy something for 
I said, yeah. And then I, then I got the look. <laughs> I said, well, it's something I've wanted for a few years now, to, ever since I started this. And I'm, I'm excited. I, th I think it's going to come in handy. And like ice fishing and stuff, I don't want, you know, I got my camera and my my underwater camera and my depth finder and everything. And, and I don't want to run a generator because then you got all that vibration going through the, I got to see if she'll behave. Oh. Going through the water. Curtis in the house. Quiet, man, Curtis. He said, J Dog, I didn't get a picture of the new dog now. Oh, oh. Curtis. That's wrong with you, man. <laughs> John or said, me neither, Curtis. <laughs> Jody says, she wants to see it. Hey, it's a good looking sun tracker. I'm telling you that. I like it. I like that other one. I wish I had the money to buy that one months ago, two months ago. I think that go ahead and give it up boy fifteen hundred for this little craft. By the time I get done fixing it up, repaint it so like there, I might be able to trade it for a nice pontoon where it don't cost me nothing to straight straight across. There's always somebody wanting to get rid of their pontoon for a boat. Because you have boat guys who buy a boat and they realize they would rather have a pontoon than they have pontoon guys buy a pontoon than they realize they would rather have a boat. And on oh, uh, retired Rick, this is awesome. I need to learn more about catch a crappie. Oh, buddy, you should have been here three hours and 46 minutes ago. We had, we had almost a hour conversation about crappie techniques and how people done it, stuff like that. Where to look, where to look. We did everything but 351. It show us how to use that. Pontoons that were dropped most of those uh, uh, they uh, uh, a lot of they'll dock well right here they'll dock their pontoon year round in the water. Then the traders come up stolen or uh tore up or something, you know, and uh, a lot of pontoons get repossessed and the people's got the trailer, but all they all they want is the pontoon, they care less about the trailer. Got to go back and watch from the beginning while I drink my coffee. <laughs> well, Rick, what, are, what do you want to know about crop fishing, buddy? Yeah, we had a pretty good conversation about it. I mean, I'm going to upgrade pontoons when I sell my house. What's wrong with the pontoon you got now? Too small or not the right design that you're wanting? There, Connor said, Tyreek, thumbs up, Curtis, thumbs up, Joey, thumbs up. Let's see here. Let's see y'all just coming in here. You all know I'm going to be. <laughs> Good morning, Rick. Hey, squirrel. Jody, you're going to have to show me a picture when you put your first first fish in that new landing net. Hey, squirrel said, afternoon, rustic is dawn off. Good morning, squirrel. I was taking a drink of coffee and can't can't drink and talk at the same time. <laughs> That's all right. I, I was showing up my cat some of my catches from yesterday. I tell you what, man, I, I had a blast yesterday. I had a ball, man. I was having so much fun. Uh, you just wouldn't believe it. I gave Rustic fishing lessons when I was with him. 
Uh, buddy, I, if I still had that picture, I'd show him the fishing lesson you give me. He was sitting in that chair, and he was uh, cutting some cutting some logs over there. <laughs> Right, Tyler Rick said, Good morning, Don R and Rusty. Good morning, Rick. I got another message here. What's this? Uh, well, Rusty, I'm going to have to drop down. Uh, sounds like the dog is tormenting Paulette. And, oh, okay. I, I got yeah. you, Sarah. And I really appreciate you allowing me to come up and chat with everybody and uh, makes my day start off good. So All right. Everybody in chat, take care, be safe, and we'll Cast catch you on the flip side. Caster's fishing well said bye, Uncle Don. <laughs> bye, Caster. All right, Uncle Don, I appreciate you coming up, bud. You know, you're welcome up here on the panel any anytime, man. Anytime. Russ, that was a nice catfish you caught. Oh yeah, that uh, that big one I'm holding up. That, that's I think that one there was my new PB. Uh, I think it is. I sent one to John. There was two. There was two pictures because one I took one, and my camera gave me a three second window to hold the fish up. Then uh, then the one with my new PB, the game board had come up. So I think it was the other one, but the game board had come up, and uh, he was talking to me and uh. He watched me catch it as he was walking up. He could see the, the Thundercat bent over. He seen me getting that stuff. And he pulled up, and he come walking up there. And I, and I asked him to take pictures. He took pictures. <laughs> Jody said, I will, Don. Yeah, I like Barnes. He's our game warden. He, uh, every time he sees my van, he, he'll stop. No matter what he's doing in park, and no matter how far down I am, he'll walk down there. I got a, I got a video. I won't, I won't video him, but uh, you can hear him talking to me, and I got a point of game board. Took pictures for me. I can take pictures. Oh, Curtis sending out some kisses to Jody. Hey, Curtis, did you run up to Jody and give her a big old hug while you was up there at the Catfish Crappie Conference? I can't believe those who went live up there uh, didn't go back here and look around in the, uh, the crappie section, man. <laughs> he said, yes, sir. <laughs> I seen you. I was, uh, I was watching a uh, I think El Gato was live there at the booth for uh, Carolina Lake Weights uh, that day. And I seen you and Eric running down through there. <laughs> hey, Connor said, Connor said uh, how are you, Rustic? Hey, I'm doing good. I'm sore from yesterday's fishing, but uh, other than that, man, I, I'm good. I'm just getting my poles re-rigged up and stuff and uh, getting ready for uh, another, hopefully another battle with the catfish this weekend. Because anytime I go fishing, I come back. That's usually, before I go fishing again, I always cut my rigs off and I re-rig them. Because, I mean, you, you catch 100 pounds of fish, 200 pounds of fish on that same rig, man. It gets stretched and pulled and twisted. And I always change out the, the swivels or whatever I got going on with that. I said, that's good to hear. You been doing well, Con? I hope everybody's doing well. Y'all keep Jody in your thoughts and prayers, man. She's got pneumonia. I like that she walked up on stage. She goes, and she tried to talk, but <laughs> I thought, whoa, she got laryngitis. I figured it's from fishing out there in that boat at nighttime, that, that cool night air. 
got her. But then she said she had pneumonia. I said, whoo, that'll, that'll do it. Jody said, I looked through the crappie. I looked through the crappie a couple of times. I looked through the crappie a couple of times. <laughs> you lost me on that one. Jody is one of the nicest people you want to meet. Yeah, yeah. I can tell that by her, her lives and, and uh, her videos and stuff. And she don't mind helping you out if you're new, and she likes you. If you're new, you come into the come into the system. Uh, she she'll help you out if you don't know what you're doing. She pays attention. She's actually one of the few that pays attention and sees somebody that's struggling or don't know what, what's going on or how to do something. She'll show you. Jody said, you too, Curtis. Oh, y'all quit flirting. <laughs> you really are. Yeah, Curtis, cool, dude. Jody, tell the truth. Was Curtis uh, starstruck? <laughs> My dog's over snoring. Yes, he was. He said, yes, he was. <laughs> I would be too if uh, I got to meet uh, the female angler of the year for the Golden Whiskers. Jody, tell us how your baking come along. You like baking pies, cookies, or bank fishing? I know the talk to text thing sometimes mess up, so I imagine you mean baking a pie or cake or cookies or something. Nah, somebody honking a horn out there. John, I ain't much of a cook. I could have told him that. Because <laughs> I've heard you say that many times. <laughs> wow, people on TikTok's liking my videos. I don't even know who them people are. I just post videos on it. I don't do nothing else. I do spend most of my time for YouTube videos, but I do will put one on there on TikTok because I can edit it, any kind of music or do whatever I want to on it. Jody said Curtis only had eyes for Marillo. <laughs> Marillo thought he was going to hump his leg. Oh, Jody's going to have to break out the spray bottle. Down, Curtis. Down, Curtis. <laughs> and then, hey, Mr. Tully, good afternoon. Welcome in. And look here, the curse response back. It's Jody's a sweetie pie, but it's going to change. Uh oh, May 6th. What's up with May 6th? Is there a challenge or something going on? Jody, just let me know when you start that flathead challenge thing up again. I'm going to try to get into do some flathead fishing this year. Uh, I'm going to hook up with uh, Possum Outdoors, and uh, he's going to show me some good little flathead spots that potentially hold about flathead, if they're still there or not. But he's going to show me some ways to try to catch them. So I've seen some of the pictures of flathead. He's caught, he's caught some nice ones. What's going on, May 6th? Bill us in, Curtis. Bill us in, Curtis. Uh-oh. 
I probably already know. Curtis, that will be the third whooping of you and Eric will get. Oh, that'd be the third time she's going to put a whooping on. And you got John Order here saying, Curtis, don't do it. It's too late. He does set May 6. I like they've already got a set in stone. Learn the hard way, I guess. <laughs> oh, Curtis said they were going to have fun with Jody. Uh-huh. It'd be interesting. On May 6th, whose live is it going to be on? Nothing else. I wonder who's that's gonna be on. Oh, the meet and greet. That's over in Tennessee, ain't it? Over where uh, Daryl puts on that meet and greet. Man, if that wasn't so far away, I'd like to go to that. Can't they have a meet and greet closer? <laughs> Tony said the whim is turning. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Because they're supposed to. Uh, the ladies versus the, the men on that. Yeah. No, it's the ladies call out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot all about that one. Yeah. That's where the ladies called out the guys. So I take it Jody called out Curtis or called out Eric. Or did she call out both? Our Tanya, uh, Tanya Hollis was talking about that, but I can't remember whose live she was on when she was talking about that. She's on somebody's. I don't know who's hosting. I don't know. Okay. Oh, that's right. They was trying to get one of the ladies to, uh, Miss Becca or one of the ladies to host if they got time. Yeah, I remember that. I remember Tanya saying something about that. See, that's what I like about being king of the skunks, man. I don't get called out. All I can do is sit back and watch. <laughs> I get my own butt whooped when I go fishing. <laughs> I have to have somebody else will perform me. Plus, I'm not catching that. <laughs> Jody thinks it's Burger King where she gets it her way. <laughs> hey, when the, uh, it's the ladies calling out the gentlemen, hey, the ladies make the rules, from what I gathered. It's just up to you if you want to accept the rules. This is boat. I want the set of brothers. Are uh, you going to take them both out at once? Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> That's 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 one lady I wouldn't want to fish against right there. <laughs> yeah, I hear that, John. My buddy's old Jody too. <laughs> but you never know though. I mean that, that Eric Curtis go out there and, and pull a rabbit out of their hat. You never know, man. Curtis said, Uncle John, come home, man. <laughs> John strained away from the bandwagon. He's leaving the flock. Curtis got to get up there and rope, catch him, and pull him back in. Eric and Curtis can pull a skunk out of a hat. <laughs> I can too, bud. 
I skunk more than I catch. Which I don't mind. I just enjoy being out there. It's courtesy, you guys are dead to me. Now, I said I'd put my money on her, on Jody, to win. But I would secretly be where we're going. Come on, Curtis. Come on, Curtis. You can do it, Curtis. Come on. Oh, my goodness. You know, you, Jody, gets her voice back. And she gets to feel it better. Sorry, Curtis, I'm I'm a winner. Got to pick winners. <laughs> oh, look at her. Jody's giving Curtis a kiss for the quick, for the quick, swift kick in the butt. <laughs> I don't forget what I was going to say now. <laughs> Mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say now, if uh that that would be a, a pretty good smack talk live. If you uh Jody gets the voice back, gets to feeling better, and then gets Eric Curtis over here, gets Jody over here, and uh and the smack talk begins. <laughs> That'd be fun to watch. I don't care if I catch a fish. I'm going to have fun. You all stay tuned. Hey, that's what it's all about, man. It's just having fun. But you're going to have some of these guys out here. They're going to be determined to beat that lady at all costs. They don't matter. They, they're uh, they going to say they're going to have some fun. But there's going to be some that's going to that's gonna be like, I wish somebody else would have called me out besides them, so I'm going to put a whooping on. You know, something like that. I mean, it's like Curtis said, go have fun with it, man. I hope they do beat me, but they will earn it, not give it to them. Hey, Curtis is a great captain. He's the one that puts Eric on fish. And if, and if Eric don't catch him, Curtis always said, that's your fault. I just drive the boat. <laughs> yeah, you go up against Jody, you're going to earn what you get, boy. She's one of them tough competitors, too. She's going to have fun with it, but she's going to be dead serious about what she does. That's what she got. Uh, a female angle of the year on go to Whisker Awards. Because, you know, Jody ain't going to, she ain't going to take it easy. She'll have fun with it, but she ain't going to take it easy. But the only thing is, is that uh, uh, Eric Curtis, if she goes, if you get her out there a couple days before that day, she'll be so tired she'll be laughing all the time. And you can tell when Jody starts getting tired, she starts laughing about everything. They have a chance if they do their homework and find the fish eat early. You know, or just talk to people that's coming in and out and put two and two together. Maybe you'll have it. And you never know who Jody's going to have out, out there with her. That's true, too. But she can still go by herself and put a whooping on most people. Because if I had to pick the top five, I thought was top five. 
uh, Jody would be an easy two, two or three. I mean, she'd be at the top five, top, top five. Because she's, she's learned a lot of this past year, and she's put that knowledge to use, and she has caught some nice, nice fish. So what I'm saying is, you never know, me and Eric might show up. <laughs> hey, you drove all the way over to the CatCon deal, Catfish and Crappie Conference, you'll drive down there. Be a little bit further, but you'll still drive. You drive there, you drive there. Jody, I'm going to Target Flatheads this year. Got this year got local tournaments. That's what I'm gonna try to do. Target some flatheads. But I'm not gonna do a lot of it, but I'm gonna try to target some of it. I would lose because I let whoever it is is on the boat real efficient. Is. So I don't do that when I go out fishing with somebody on their boat. I get there. Uh, I don't mind real fishing, but I, I like to watch them fill it in too. You know, don't don't just sit there. You know, let me get it all. You get up there and get you some of it. So I kept trying to tell Jeremy. I said, I'm not here to catch every fish, bud. So that's great, John. I can give you tips on finding them, and I imagine she could too because uh, she uh, she's learned a lot. Over this past year, man. She, like I said, she puts that knowledge to use. Oh, I gotta get my charger pack out here too. Thank you, Harry. What's that? Well, hey, my little cool kid. What number the cool kid? Oh, I know that song. Yeah. Well, it's just lying right there. I guess I'll use this one. Sixty-three percent. I didn't use much battery life. Bam. Let's see. Hey, there's Alvin Lewis. What's going on, Alvis? Alvin, you've been doing all right. I catch plenty on my own, or rather, the other person experience it. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, especially if they haven't been fishing or haven't really caught, you know, many big ones. Curtis said, Jody, you know you'll lose because we'll be playing footies too much. Jody said, I do like footies. Hey, look at her. Alvin said he's doing good. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, what we got? Oh, everybody's saying hi. Hi to hi to hey, Alvin. Hey, look at there, there's Uncle Don. 
So there's a lot to do on the boat, so I look at it as helping me out to really the fish. Like I like to do while they are really in the fish. A lot I like to do while they are really in the fish. I've seen you fish on not your pontoon. When that fish hits, you jump up and grab that pole. You get excited. And I can understand. Okay, got to unload this titanium rustic. Talk to y'all later. Have a good day, everyone. All right, John. Don't work too hard, buddy. Be careful. Unload that. Watch them unload that stuff. Oh, there's life. Hello, life. <clears throat> Make a love shout out, life. All right, don't worry about it. He'll be back somewhere, but he'll be back. <laughs> I gotta find that little charger. That, that little booger's around here somewhere. Ah, I, I bet it's in my van. I don't remember to put it in my van. It's somewhere. I can't tell you that. I can get the flashlight down there and see if I can locate it. Somebody's been trying to get into my chains here. Not like that. I don't want to miss that. Hey, look at her. I found it. I found it. I think it was laying down there somewhere. Now I can charge my phone battery pack up. I'll turn it over and it might go in. Ah, there we go. Hey, there's Cold Creek. What's going on, Billy? That was a challenge that I had to do it. Otherwise, I'm pretty mellow. Yeah, yeah. I understand that up no. You die hard fisherman, you know. That's I always tell people, don't underestimate me, you know. I don't fish a whole lot. Don't underestimate me. I can't catch. It's just that I got to put in the time, you know, and find the time, in other words, to get out more often. But uh, Uncle Don, oh, boy, you don't, I don't I ever underestimate estimate him. There's been some people in some tournaments found that out. <laughs> He's He could pull it off at the last minute. I seen him do it. He said, this is going to be a Hail Mary. He said, I'm going to get one right here. He throwed it, dude, out there. It wasn't five minutes. Bam. He wins. Hey, look at Curtis is going fishing. You be y'all be careful out there. Hope the winds ain't blowing up there as hard as what it is right here. But y'all should be having calm winds after yesterday. But the winds are really blowing here right now. Uncle Don said you would whoop me, but I would love it. <laughs> yeah. You don't see me in too many tournaments, do you? I know I won't win. I don't even stand a chance. Like the Itty Bitty Kitty Tournament. I, I got into that one because I thought that would be fun, and it was fun. Hey, there's a and Prospected. Welcome in, buddy. How's that? Uh, I feel all my money change built out. How's that prospecting going? Hey, welcome back, Leon. I dumped all my chains. I gotta pick it up. <laughs> Guess that's all of it. If not, I'll find it with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Uh, it's slow right now. And oh man. I figured River Boys be in here. I'd show them I got the shirt in. I like the shirt. It's the damn River Boys. Spring is around the corner. A lot easier to find that gold when the ground thaws out, ain't it? Get better access to places.
Leon, Leon, Leon. Yep. So y'all make sure y'all go over and uh, check out the video I just dropped and the shorts. Check them out. Because like I said, yesterday I had an awesome day of fishing, man. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to have to get off here because I have got to go check my mail. And I've got to go get my fishing license. So thank y'all for coming in. I appreciate y'all coming in and, and, and spending time with me today and everybody. We had a great discussion on the crappie. Uh, uh how to utilize your equipment for better catches on crappie and stuff, and how to locate them, find them, and techniques and stuff. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming in. Appreciate you all so much. Uh, y'all, Whatever y'all doing out there today, y'all be careful doing it. And I'll, uh, I'll see what we come up with for another topic on Tuesday. And uh, we might even move it to – I don't know, topic Thursday or something. You know, we'll do it Thursday night or something. Uh, we just have to wait and see. <laughs> so, y'all have a good one. And uh, if you can't be good, be good at it. I'll see y'all later. Bye.